spring weather, where have you gone? The Mets and Phillies finish up their series tonight, and if you're out tailgating, what better use for your hibachi than to stay warm? That's going to be a feat tonight as the Mets and Phillies meet at Shea Stadium in New York. This Mets game on SNY presented in high definition by IO Digital Cable, the leader in HD. Do you see in HD? And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Shea Stadium. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling with you tonight as the Mets and Phillies play the rubber game of their three-game series. Now, the Mets and Phillies finished 1-2 in the National League East last year, but in the 45 years that these two teams have shared a division, they've only finished both over 500 six times, and it's been awfully tough to create a rivalry, but it seems as though one is starting to come together. Well, you can see by the numbers that they are just a rivalry because they're so close, only 120 miles between two cities, but they never have been on top at the same time. One is good, one is down. One is down, one is good. And I'll tell you, though, when I played against the Phillies in those days in the 80s, really had an amazing back and forth. Even though the Phillies were down, they loved to try to beat up on the Mets. And the Phillies in those days, in 86, 87, 88, always played the Mets tough. But it's been hard to get the fans involved, but it seems that Jimmy Rollins may have been the catalyst to finally ignite the spark. Yeah, Jimmy Rollins, of course, with his statement that the Phillies were the team to beat. But you know, you gotta like Rollins, because he's feisty, he played feisty yesterday, one of the reasons that the Phillies won that game. And I'll tell you that I think that he's gotten both teams into the rivalry. They were screaming Jimmy Rollins here in the stands and I think that's a good thing for the rivalry. The highlight tonight on a cold, wet night at Chase Stadium will be the matchup for the first time of two veteran left-handers, Tom Glavin and Jamie Moyer. Between them, 85 years of age, the oldest matchup of left-handed starting pitchers in Major League history. Yeah, and both of them are the kind of guys that you don't you can just throw out the radar gun. These are the kind of guys that take a little off, add a little, and Glavin had an amazing spring training. His first start against the Cardinals couldn't have been any better. Had a little trouble, though, in Atlanta with the field for the ball, that might be an issue tonight. Jamie Moy, of course, built out of the same stock, hasn't had the Hall of Fame kind of career that Tom Glavin has had, but still, one of those dependable kind of guys, you can always count him for 30 starts, 200 innings, and one of those guys that's great in your ball club, he instructs, he's almost like a leader in that clubhouse. Now, Glavin has an issue with his finger, he's got Raynaud's syndrome, which makes his fingers a little cold, he had a scare last year that it might be something worse, how does that affect him on a cold night? Well, I think in Atlanta it was cold and windy, here it's cold and windy also, but there's a threat of precipitation so there is a lot of moisture in the air. I think that'll really help him uh, uh, grip his changeup, and I think it'll help Moyer also. So Glavin and Moyer face off for the first time ever. The Mets and the Phillies, the rubber game of three from Shea Stadium. Fans will try and stay warm, and so will the guys on the field. Mets and Phils coming right up. Mets are on the field on a chilly night at Shea Stadium. Game time temperature right around 44 degrees as Tom Glavin takes the mound for his third start of the year. And here's the forward lineup to take the field against Glavin tonight. Ryan Howard held without a home run last night. First time in six games against the Mets dating back to last year that he had not homered. And the Mets, other than one pitch by Emmy Oryx Burgos, have done a pretty good job keeping him in check. Only change in the Phillies lineup from last night. Carlos Ruiz does the catching instead of Rod Barajas. Well, Tommy Glavin was excellent in his first start. Suffered a little bit with his control in his second start, but was not that bad. One more K. He ties Don Drysdale at 2,486. Nine times. Well, 17 out of his 18 years in the big leagues, this 19th season, he's had double figures and wins. Everything he's done, you can repeat the stats Nine away from 300. Last Saturday in Atlanta, he hooked up against his old golfing buddy <laughs> and rotation partner John Smoltz. And even though he only gave up a couple of earned runs, Glavin's changeup was not sharp. Well, you know what? He was so sharp in spring training, wasn't he, Gary, with that changeup? So to see him struggle with it was something we hadn't seen in an entire month. So see the defense, the Lexus defense for the Mets. The only difference really is easily at second base, getting a start against the left-handed Moyer. The rest, same cast of characters. Damien Easley, 37 years old, first year with the Mets at his first start as a Met. As Jose Valentin gets the night off. Not a good night to sit on the bench inert. <laughs> it's not a good night to sit anywhere. <laughs> it's cold. Jimmy Rollins will lead things off, just one for nine in the series, but that one was a triple last night. And Glavin starts him off with the sinker outside for ball one. 
see the start Rollins is off to despite the 250 batting average is on base percentage is up at 415 and he fouls this one back our way one and one Rollins seems to be consciously looking at more pitches this year I think the entire lineup for the Philadelphia Phillies as they lead Major League Baseball in getting walks I think they're trying to get like American League used to do like the Cleveland Indians teams that Charlie Manuel managed trying to get deep in the count of course they drew 11 walks last night helped out by the seven issued by Oliver Perez 44 degrees at game time wind has shifted a little bit it had been blowing straight in out of the north and Glavin misses with the changeup to fall behind three and one and we talked about it a little bit in the pregame that's why it's so important for Glavin to throw strikes main walk six Oliver Perez walks seven 13 walks by starting pitchers the last two nights and the fastball hit in the air to deep left field now Lou going back to the wall and it's out of here Jimmy Rollins with his fourth home run of the year leads off the ball game as Glavin fell behind came in with the fastball and Rollins parked it to put the Phillies ahead one to nothing. Well, Cole didn't bother Rollins one little bit. Well, Rollins now, as you see, Tommy Glavin just challenging Rollins. 3-1. Rollins' fifth home run now off Tom Glavin, batting well over 350. Now 21 for 58. Five home runs and 11 RBIs. Rollins off Glavin. Here's Shane Victorino, the number two hitter, and he takes the fastball wide. Well, Rollins now with four home runs. So he's off to a fast start in the power department. Interesting coming into this series, the two leadoff hitters, Rollins and Reyes, lead their respective teams in slugging percentage. You don't see that very often. Three and zero now to Victorino. So Glavin off to a, an uneven start. Oliver Perez can commiserate with falling behind on the count. Of course, he's a lot more accustomed to that feeling than Glavin is. And he walks Victorino. So, you know, you go back to Glavin, and we talked about it in the opening. He has this problem, which has been ongoing for many years. This is not something new. It's called Raynaud's syndrome, and it causes his fingertips to feel cold at times, particularly his middle finger, and that's got to have impact on his changeup. Well, it has impact for any kind of pitcher that is a finesse kind of pitcher, and I think that this cold weather, that's why you usually see last April, Glavin had an amazing April, 5-0. and One of the reasons he was 5-0, and it was a beautiful spring last year. April was warm and 65, 70 degrees. Not so this year. What happened to that April? <laughs> Here's Chase Utley, and he lines one down the right field line. Sean Green on the run, and he tracks it down. And back to first, Victorino. That's the first out of the game. Well, you see Sean Green playing not like the Phillies. He plays pretty deep out there in right field, which allows him the angle to get to this ball. Good job by Green. Good positioning by the Mets on Chase Utley. You have to play him deep, respect his power. Yeah, nice break on that ball going toward the line. So one out and one on. And here's Ryan Howard, and the Mets have done a nice job against Howard in this series. You see he's off to a rather slow start with the bat after hitting 58 home runs a year ago. Phillies with a run home on the Jimmy Rollins home run. 16th time in Rollins' career that he's let off the first inning with a home run. Lays off the changeup and it's one and one. Ryan Howard has had a busy week in New York. Stopped in to see David Letterman the other night. That's what MVP will do. MVPs go to Letterman. So there's another competition for the Mets and the Phillies. Who will get more David Letterman appearances in their careers? Uh -huh. David Wright or Ryan Howard? Well, it's pretty amazing when you put their right side and the left side of the Mets together. Uh, they all went to Japan together, right, Reyes, Utley, and Howard. Wow. So when do Reyes and Utley go to see Dave? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Back to first Victorino.
Matt Burrell hitting fifth in the order and waiting on deck. The Phillies came in to last night having lost six of their first seven. That was a huge win for them last night to get themselves righted. And now Glavin behind on Howard three and one. So three of the first four hitters Glavin has found himself behind in the count. And listen you're playing with fire. I mean the thing about Glavin is that uh, you know lefty the lefty usually is an advantage for the pitcher but not against Ryan Howard. He stays in there pretty good against left handed pitchers. You see Glavin continually blowing on that left hand. Victorino runs change up swung and missed Leducas throw on target and he got it. Reyes with the tag on the one hop throw and Victorino is gunned down two away. Well what a nice play here by Jose Reyes with the ability to catch it and lay the glove right there one hop throw. See how he takes it and just blocks the foot of Victorino. That's I could even call that play. Not the greatest to jump against Glavin. He's just fa factoring in. He's thinking that Howard's got to make some kind of contact and didn't. And uh, Glavin ends up walking Howard on the 3 2 changeup, second walk of the inning. And so that caught stealing looms very large as Pat Burrell will come up with two out and a runner at first. So the Phillies have picked up a couple of walks in this first inning. Becoming their stock in trade. Here's Burl, and he takes a strike. And you wonder as you look at the uh, the margin by which the Phillies lead the National League in walks. That's stunning. And you wonder if you juxtapose that against the fact that the Phillies have not been very good at driving in runners in scoring position. Maybe they're being a little too patient at times. Yeah, that's a good call, Gary. I think that they are trying to wait with that perfect pitch and against good pitching that doesn't happen that often and against the Mets you saw that walk differential between them and the Reds that's largely due to the Mets the last couple of nights you see that 486 on base percentage for Burrow that's second in the National League and Glavin can't get him to chase the change of two and one good way for them to approach hitting though don't you think in their band box of a park once the summer comes to get people on base and hope someone hits a fly ball well that's the uh, that's the Oakland A's style right walks and, and home runs and the rest of it takes care of itself. On two and one, Burl takes up and in. Again, Glavin falls and finds himself behind. He's gone to a three ball count on four of the first five batters. He's trying to throw that cutter into the right hander. He just doesn't have any feel for that. Doesn't have any feel for his changeup. Doesn't want to have to come into with Pat Burl with a, another fastball. So Wes Helms on deck, and he walks Burl the third walk of the inning. So now two out and two on. And Glavin trying to manage this first inning as Rick Peterson looks on as he takes on Wes Helms. 21 pitches in the first inning is a lot of pitches but let me tell you about Tom Glavin sometimes and you'll see Moyer do it also sometimes he's behind in the count and it's almost like it's third and down I'm going to punt I'm going to go to the next hitter and start with a new count. Well Helms is Glavin's former Atlanta teammate. Who has uh, done okay against Tommy in their matchups? He has two home runs and 14 at bats, and he takes the fastball for a strike. Helms being called upon to be a, a regular, everyday player, really for the first time in his career at age 32. Had a terrific year as a part time player in Florida last year, really a leader on that young Florida team. And the changeup misses, and it has been missing consistently one and one. If you're a hitter like Wes Helms or the Philadelphia Phillies what do you say to yourself Glavin cannot get his change up over so I'm just going to as they say spit on that not swing at that and just look for the fastball in. Howard at second not much speed there Burl at first not much speed there two out and Helms slices one foul one and two. Aaron Rowan hitting seventh in the order waiting on deck. Well with the struggle that Glavin's had to get a feel for his most important pitch if he can get out of this inning with one run scoring he'll be thrilled. One and two to Helm. Just missed inside and it's two and two. Well, good change up after the fastball inside you see that grip right here you see it he's got the forefinger and the thumb on the ball change up inside good job by Helm to take that pitch. On two and two Helms hits it off the end of the bat which splinters and it goes foul. 
Little shards of bat going up the third baseline. I mean, it's less a broken bat than a shaved bat. It's like hockey. As soon as you splinter the stick, you got to drop it. So Get now, a new one. So now Helm breaks his bat, uh, an ash-colored bat, and he goes to a, a different colored bat. Well, he figured he was way ahead of that pitch, so he grabbed one a couple ounces uh, heavier. <laughs> <laughs> Lavin's about to throw his 27th pitch of this first inning. And he fouled it away. And as was the case in Atlanta in his last start, the balls outnumbering the strikes for Glavin early in the game. He walked three in his five and a third innings against the Braves, but he was continually behind on the count. Glavin comes inside and Helms pulls it foul. You know, Gary, what happens on these cold days is anyone out there who plays pool in the lineup, your cue ball, that's what the ball feels on a day like this. It feels like a cue ball. Can't feel the seams, can't feel the stitching. Very hard to get a grip. Now, it's it's rain today, and so there's some moisture in the air. Does that help? I think it helps, but it's just it's just too cold and just enough wind. Two on and two out. Two and two to Helms. And the changeup misses, and it's three and two. So Glavin having trouble putting this inning to bed. He got a hit on Helms. But now the runners will take off and Willie Randolph showing his concern as he chats with his bench coach Jerry Manuel. Howard at second Burl at first will take off with three and two and two down. And Helm swings and misses at the changeup and Glavin escapes relatively unscathed from a troubled first inning. Got the changeup to strike out Helms in the end. After Rollins gave the Phillies the early edge with a leadoff home run, Levin works around three walks, and that's all he allowed. Forty-four-year-old Jamie Moyer takes the mound for the Phillies, and the Geico Mets lineup: one change tonight. Damian Easley batting eighth and playing second base. His first start as a Met. The rest of the lineup intact. The Mets are averaging better than six runs per game this year, leading the National League in runs scored. Jose Reyes leads off against Moyer, and he takes it wide, 1 0. Jamie Moyer's first start against the Mets at Shea was 21 years ago. Well, kind of a homecoming for Jamie Moyer coming back to Philadelphia. Went to high school near Philadelphia, Philadelphia and attended St. Joe's University. Ray is sitting at 333, second in the National League with those nine RBIs. He's been on base in all eight games. And he lines one over Utley's head and into right field, a base hit. Well, last night, Reyes got on base three separate times. The Mets could never get him in. He's on base leading off the first tonight. Boy, Gary, both left-handed and right-handed. You see the changeup? Again, the circle with the forefinger and the thumb. And it's up, out over the plate. And all season long, Reyes is doing this even better than last year, going the other way, not taking too much, and driving the ball that way. Just a good piece of hitting. Willie Randolph was talking about Reyes today and how he is developing the ability to identify his pitch, to wait longer, both in terms of waiting longer in the at bat and waiting longer on each pitch to identify it better to get the right pitch to hit. And I think that comes from confidence. I think that he is not afraid now to hit deeper into the count, which he wasn't earlier in his career. So Reyes, with four steals in six tries, had a stolen base and was caught once last night as Laduca takes one high. Ball just one for eight in this series, but Still hitting at 333 for the first week and a half of the season. And Moyer checks in on Reyes. By the way, if you're sitting at home and you haven't watched Jamie Moyer pitch before, that is a 79 mile an hour fastball he's throwing. I mean, he will. Maybe occasionally break 80, but not very often. And uh, as Reyes sporting that uh, that bunched up turtleneck, 
A little like the old Ron Darling gold day look. <laughs> when I was a kid, it called it Dicky, right? <laughs> but, you know, Moyer, it took him a long time to learn how to win with his stuff in the major leagues. And one of the reasons he started to win is he, he learned the lesson that Glavin didn't learn until a couple of years ago, much earlier in his career, about pitching inside. Pitching inside, and, and we talked about it last night, the slower you throw, the more important for you to pitch inside. Doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but it does. You saw Moyer's position on the rubber, exactly the opposite of Glavin's. Well, yeah, he likes to get on that side of the rubber because even though he does throw a changeup like Tommy, Tommy's most important pitch is changeup. Moyer really it's his fastball inside the righties as he's on that other side of the rubber. The middle part will be safe and clean here for the first <laughs> few innings. Spending a lot of time checking in on Reyes as Luduka waits. And Moyer misses and falls behind 2 0. Oh. Carlos Beltran, he's got the full hood going tonight, waiting on deck. He's talking to Willie Randolph about playing in cold weather. He said the coldest he's ever been was as a rookie in the World Series in Cincinnati when he fielded a ground ball and could not feel the ball. And had to push it over to first base. As Leduca lofts one to shallow left, that'll fall in for a base hit. And the Mets have the first two men on. And Beltron will come up with two aboard. Again, this is the fastball by Jamie Moore trying to get it, cut it in on Leduca. You can see Ruiz sitting inside. That ball's left out over the plate, and it's really hard to get in on Leduca. He has that ability to pull those arms in and fight that ball off the left field. So the Mets down one nothing and try to fight right back against Jamie Moyer. First two aboard for Beltron. Two home runs, eight runs batted in, and he's hit in all eight games the Mets have played. And he takes ball one from Moyer, who's having trouble throwing strikes early. Here's a Rico defense for the Philadelphia Phillies. The only real change is Ruiz behind the plate. Barajas played last night, and he had a nice game. Victorino and Rowan, you look at them at center and right field, very shallow, probably the shallowest we've seen of any team against the Mets. Beltran trying to lay off, and he stopped the swing in time, and again, Moyer behind 2-0. Another change up. Good job by Beltran. Just keeping that bat back. I believe that's Bill Miller at first base that made that call. We have just a three man umpiring crew tonight. We have not been informed as to why. And a pickoff try, and Reyes just able to get back. Moyer made that reverse spin, and Reyes froze. He wasn't planning on making a move to second, but. Reyes was trying to time him, trying to steal second. See him going? And great job by Moyer. That's the hardest pitch he's thrown. You see <laughs> Utley, what he does here, tries to put his foot out to try to block the bag. Well, Utley is standing very close to second base to try and keep Reyes as close as he can. And Beltron waves at the changeup, a 2-0 changeup from Moyer, and that had Beltron full. That changeup coming out. You see that grip, all the hands on the ball. When you throw that changeup, you got to make sure that you bury that ball back in your palm. When you throw regular pitches, you want them out in your fingertips. Changeup, you want it buried back in your palm. Here you see how close Utley is playing to the bag. So Reyes can't get far away at all. On two and one, Beltron takes the fastball inside. And now Moyer behind three and one. Carlos Delgado waiting to hit next, and Delgado's got some gaudy numbers against Jamie Moyer. So Moyer in a pickle here, handed a 1-0 lead. Now with two aboard, he's behind on Beltron, 3-1. and one. There goes Reyes. Beltron hits it hard through the hole, and Reyes will come home with the tying run. Maduka stops at second. Reyes in motion, forcing the third baseman Helms to abandon his spot, and Beltron hit it right there. Game tied at one. Boy, I tell you, Jose Reyes with his speed just makes so many things happen. He takes off on the pitch from 
Boyer. Helms has the cover. As he covers, a double play poss possible grounder goes through the hole. Base hit for Beltran. And Reyes, you know, running on his own and running despite the fact that, you know, Utley is standing 10 feet away from the bag. Well, it's a fastball by Jamie Moyer. See, he throws a little three quarters, but that did not get inside. Good job by Beltran of hitting that on the ground. And he found a hole. So three straight hits. Mets have tied the game. And now here's Delgado, who has seven career home runs against Moyer, who leans him back with a 78 mile an hour fastball. Well, when a guy owns you, these are the kind of things that you have to do to try to get him off the plate. See, Carlos just leaning out over that plate. Can't wait to offer it. One of the Moria pitches. So Carlos says, that's okay, Cousin Jamie. And he comes inside again, and it's 2-0. Oh. Now, well, Moyer's been behind 2-0 oh now in three straight hitters. Well, another one up and inside, and you know, the, the thing about Delgado is you got to say to yourself, just calm down. Look at those numbers. Seven home runs, 26 for 57. He has seven against Sosa and only 28 at best. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the strike two and one. Jorge Sosa was the, the happiest man in the world when the Mets picked him up and he knew he wouldn't have to face Delgado this year. It's interesting. The Phillies played Delgado pretty straight up in double play depth. Of course, they played that overshift in the first game of the series, and Delgado laid down a bunt. There's a strike. Good pitch by Moyer, 2 and 2. David Wright waiting to follow. So both Glavin and Moyer getting touched in the first inning. Glavin was able to avoid further damage after the Rollins home run. Mets trying to cash in further against Moyer. Still nobody out. And Delgado strikes out on the curveball. That's the first out of the inning. Well, you see it's a changeup, but it's a high changeup. See that grip, Gary? It's a high changeup that just totally fools Delgado because that's a pitch you'll never see. It's supposed to be down and away. It's up and in. And he took something off as it, well. It's like two fastballs after going up and in with the two fastballs, then through the same kind of pitch, but a changeup. So one away runner still at first and second for Wright. David has hit in all eight games this year and 20 straight dating back to last year. And Moyer starts him off off speed nothing in one. It's been a funny hitting streak for Wright. Last four games he hasn't had a hit till his final at bat. Trying to get off to a faster start tonight. Pulls it down to third, could be two. Helms to Utley and on to first, double play, side retired. So just as Glavin did in the top of the inning, Moyer is able to escape further damage after giving up a quick run in the bottom of the first. Beltron's base hit with Reyes running, brings home the first Met run to tie up the ball game. Weekday mornings before you head out the door, check out the CW11's commuter cast. From traffic tie-ups to train delays, get up-to-the-minute time-saving traffic reports with commuter cast all morning long on the CW11 Morning News. Tom Glavin labored through the first inning, spent 30 pitches, walked three after walking just four combined in his previous two starts. And walks have certainly plagued Met pitchers in this series. Aaron Rowan will lead off the second. And Rowan takes a strike. Rowan's had a nice series. Two for four in the two games. He's drawn five walks as well. And he takes Rowan inside. And that's why despite a 296 batting average, he's got a 429 on base percentage. And again, looking up and down the Phillies lineup, that's been the case early in the year. Hard toward the hole and into, base, into left field a base hit. And so the Phillies had their second hit off Glavin. And the rolling the board here. leading off the second. Ruiz. It'll bring up the number eight hitter Carlos Ruiz the Philly catcher. Ruiz and Rod Barajas right now are splitting the catching duties for the Phils. Ruiz started the first game of the series Barajas last night.
Rowan has a couple of steals already this year. Off the end of the bat, and it scripts foul. I was talking before about cold weather and playing in cold weather. Does it favor the pitcher as long as he can get a grip on the ball? It definitely favors the pitcher because the hitters don't want to be out in this thing. And, and uh, you know, they're out there standing in the field. I think the only people that stay warm are usually the pitcher and the catcher. That being said, there's certain people that can pitch in the cold and not pitch in the cold. I grew up in Massachusetts, as Tommy did. I think that's a big advantage. You know, Tommy's got that finger condition, but it's an advantage that you grew up pitching in this kind of weather. This is a great day in the spring. Luke foul. Yeah, any day you can play <laughs> that's right. in the Northeast. In the spring is a good day. You get those kids from Florida who are used to perfect weather conditions. That was Mr. Met. We used to fly in the LaGuardia. You know, you fly in late. It's kind of misty or raining here at New York, one of the airports. All the California guys would be glum. Down to our third, backhanded by Wright. He's got a long throw to make with the catcher running, and he got it. Wright had just enough time to pick off Ruiz. As Rowan moves up to second, one away. You know, David Wright is really starting to perfect this throw. We've seen it a couple times now. When he has to go far to his right, see he's off the line. Ruiz pulls that cutter in. He's able to make the play, but I think he's perfected this throw where instead of trying to carry the ball all the way to first base, he plants himself. Oh, you see a little slip too with that right foot. Watch his right foot. It slips a little bit, but still able to throw that one hopper over to Delgado, just getting the lead. So one away. Rowan at second, and Jamie Moyer the batter. And Moyer takes a strike. Moyer has not uh, spent all that much time in the National League in his career, so despite uh, having been around for 20 plus years, he doesn't yet have 200 at bats. Rowan at second with one out. It's 0-2 to Moyer. You know what's great about Jamie Moyer? He's been playing for so long. Look at those stirrups. No one wears this uniform like that anymore. The guys today like to wear it baggy. They like to wear it over their shoe. He's like the, the Don, John Stockton of baseball with that outfit. Actual stirrups. And Glavin gets it in there for a call strike three. Second strikeout for Glavin, two away. Good change up down by Tommy Glavin. Both pitchers trying to get that feel. It's pretty interesting. The umpire Eddie Montague, as you see that change up down. See that call? That's like you're the pitcher. Go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a little down, but too bad. So two away, and now Jimmy Rollins, who led off the game with a home run, is fourth of the year, and he takes a strike. Now there are the old stirrups on Tommy Agee. We have to go all the way back to 69 to get that look. Hey, the only guys who wear stirrups these days are coaches. That's right. And Jamie Moyer. And Rollins takes a strike. Glavin's starting to find the strike zone. So in two. You know, Gary, there's probably a lot of young kids out there who don't even know what stirrups are. Because they all usually wear the soccer kind of socks mm -hmm. under their uniform. Solid color. Yep. You got the white sanitary hose underneath and the stirrups. Showing that white half moon. Glavin comes inside and misses one and two. By the way, Rollins home run ties him for the National League lead. Miguel Cabrera has four. Adam Dunn has four. And now, lo and behold, Jimmy Rollins has four. That may not last. Uh, one and two. Rollins takes just inside. And it's two and two. The reason there's a dearth of power numbers is just because of the weather. Simple as that. As soon as it warms up, the hitters will warm up also. Well, the weather has been so much colder this spring than last. Not only in the Northeast, but everywhere except in California and Florida. And now it's three and two on Rollins. It's kind of funny. You and I and Keith were looking at the schedule and saying to ourselves, you know, really the first day that it's going to be warm is going to be when you and Keith go to Florida. Oh, you're not coming? No. I'm not allowed on the Florida trip. That's Keith. <laughs> Keith, Florida. Florida, Keith. 
3-2 to Rollins, and he drives one deep down the left field line, headed toward the wall, and it's out of here. Jimmy Rollins with his second home run of the night, his fifth home run of the year to lead the National League, and the Phillies now have a 3-1 lead. Jimmy Rollins, big talker, power hitter. Well, he is backing it up. And after taking a couple of pitches that were borderline close, again, trying to come inside with that change was Glavin. And Rollins does a nice job of staying back. And then he shows, even as a leadoff hitter, the kind of power he has. Shane Victorino, and he drives one deep down the left field line, hooking just foul. And Victorino making a bid for a home run. Philly is starting to tee off on Tom Glavin. Let's see what Rollins has done in terms of multiple home run games. Rollins' career high in home runs was last year when he hit 25. One and one to Victorino. That's the first time he had hit more than 20 in a season. But Rollins off to a very fast start in 2007. There's a strike to Victorino, one and two. Well, the Met faithful got on Rollins in the first game when the Mets were able to come score those seven runs in the eighth, win 11 to five. But he's having the last laugh right now early on in this rubber match. Had the triple yesterday, two home runs in the first two innings tonight. Slap to third. And David Wright throws out Victorino to end the inning. But just when it looked like Glavin might escape this inning unscathed, here came Jimmy Rollins again to poke his second home run of the night. Rollins, your National League leader in home run. Three to one, Phil. Mets down by two as they come to bat in the bottom of the second. Moise Salou leads off against Jamie Moyer. He hits one up the middle. Base hit for Alou. Well, Moises, who has been swinging the bat probably better than anybody else on the ball club, leads off with a first pitch base hit. You know, baseball, you use your legs many different ways for pitching, for hitting. And the key for hitting is that, listen, Jimmy Rollins, watch how he uses his legs to really explode into this pitch from Glavin. Now, think about it. He's not going to win any bench press contests against Ryan Howard, but using his legs generates enough power to get that ball over the wall. 25 home runs last year. It's a lot for a leadoff hitter. Sean Green tying run at the plate and he's hit by the Moyer pitch. So Moyer trying to come inside as he did against Delgado. But he nicks Sean Green and the Mets have the tying runs on base. Well, Moyer and Glavin so far with the tightrope game as they're trying to <laughs> fastball inside trying to brush Green off like he did to Delgado. Delgado was able to get out of the way. Green not. So the Mets who got the first two on in the first inning and were able to chase one home but that's all get another opportunity here in the second but now with the eight and nine hitters coming up Damien Easley making his first start as a Met has had just one at bat this season. And the breaking ball misses one and oh Damien was born in New York lived in upper Manhattan as a youngster then in Mount Vernon and when he was 11 moved to Southern California and uh, came up as a shortstop with the Angels later a star second baseman with the Tigers and he takes a strike and he has been a very valuable reserve player the last few years first in Florida and then last year in Arizona and essentially the Mets signed him to be Chris Woodward. Woodward had a rough year last year for the Mets and they thought easily would provide a little more thump hit nine home runs off the bench for Arizona last year. One and two to easily. And you add in the fact that he's one of those guys who you love to have around because he's just a delightful person. Great personality and the great thing about Damien is that he has said the way he gets ready because he's a bench player every single day he comes to the park he comes ready to play like he's a starter and if they say hey you're not in the lineup okay I'll shut it down now but he comes every day prepared to start. Fouls off 
The Moyer fastball, and it's one and two. Tom Glavin waiting on deck. Do you have a problem with jackets in the on deck circle, by the way? No, I don't. No. <laughs> Just on the bases, I think. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to get that much heat to keep that arm warm. Just checking. <laughs> Need to know what the parameters are. Easley hits the breaking ball in the air to right. Victorino playing shallow against everybody. Now Lou tags at second, but he's not going anywhere. Not hit deep enough. And that's the first out. By the way, we mentioned earlier we're playing with three umpires tonight. Jerry Lane is the missing umpire. We're told family emergency. He had to leave at the last moment so we're going with Ed Montague behind the plate Bill Miller and Marvin Hudson you see there on the bases there's Ed he's the crew chief of this gang and Glavin comes up and we'll see whether he's called upon to bunt first and second one out we've seen the Phillies already in this series employ the wheel be interesting if they do that again where the shortstop covers third third baseman Helms charges Glavin with three sacrifices this year and more in his career than any pitcher in history. They play straight up and he bunts it perfectly down to Helms who will have to hurry. Low throw gets away. Now Lou comes in to score. Green to third. Down to second is Glavin. It's three to two Philadelphia. A perfect bunt by Glavin. So good that Helms wound up throwing it away. Well, the only way to beat this, you have to bunt the ball to the third baseman. Glavin does that. But you're right, Gary. It's such a good bunt on the line. By the time Helms picks it up, he's got to kind of hustle his throw over there. And the ground is wet with the moisture and just tosses this one away. Utley in that position, you'd like him to come off the bag and maybe block it. But too late as Alou sees the play, recognizes it, and scores easily. Sacrifice for Glavin. An error on Helms allowing the run to score and Green to go to third. So the Mets are back to within a run. Not, not quite what Glavin and Moyer had in mind tonight. Reyes up with second and third and one out. Phillies in at the corners back at second and short. And the curveball misses high. Reyes had a base hit and scored his first time up. He's now scored 11 runs this year in the first nine games. And another breaking ball, and Boyer with a distinct game plan against Reyes here. Yeah, the, the, he's from the school of never challenge anyone for about two and a half hours, is Jamie Moyer. <laughs> but uh, interesting there for Jose Reyes is laying off that curveball. That's a pitch that he would swing at early in his career. And I think that's a good point because the game plan, the, the scouting report on Reyes is changing. On 2 and 0, he comes with a fastball and it's fouled off. I mean, er, as, as recently as this time last year, you throw that breaking ball and Reyes would be wailing it. What pitchers are doing now, they're throwing that curveball in the dirt and he takes it and they look over to the bench. I thought that was the game plan. He's supposed <laughs> to swing at that pitch. He doesn't do it anymore. He just keeps getting better and better. So the pitch count for Moyer up to 28 here in the second. And Reyes oops, one foul, and it's two and two. Although he went after this fastball here. Fastball count, he gets it just a little out of the strike zone. See how he tried to stay on top of that ball? Just put too high. So now Reyes with two strikes, at least trying to put the ball in play here. He only needs a ground ball to get that run home from third. Green at third, Glavin at second with one out. Mets down by a run as they bat in the second. So these two veteran left-handers having to work awfully hard the first two innings of this game. And Reyes hits one in the air, shallow to center. Green tagging, not very deep. Rowan with the catch. Green will not come. And it's cut off at the mound by Howard. Two away. So Reyes unable to get that run in. Well, even at 75 miles an hour, if a pitcher sets up his pitches, he can still throw a fastball that will jam the hitter inside and up. 
tries to pull his hands in, trying to inside out and can't. And that one will smart on a night like this. So with two out, it's left to Loduca. That's got a run in the first inning, but bypassed a chance for more. And they'd like to be able to cash in at least one more here in the second. Loduca had a base hit his first time up, a single to left. Just his second hit in this series. Watch Laduca in these RBI situations. A lot of times he'll try to shoot this ball to right field. And taking all the way, strike one. Green the tying run at third, Glavin at second. Boy, that was a great bunt by Glavin. Yeah. Nothing at two to Laduca. Does Carlos look a little cold? Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody looks cold tonight. It, it, it was 44 at game time, but you know what? With with all the moisture in the air and the wind blowing, somehow it feels a little colder than that. I'm doing my part to drink all the coffee in the building, by the way. Good job. Starbucks thanks you. <laughs> and Leduca fouls it away. Well, it's supposed to get a little bit better the next couple of days, and then we're supposed to have a nor'easter on Sunday. <laughs> they didn't have this in Cuba. This is supposed to be 60 mile an hour winds or something on Sunday. Now those are nice coats. Where do we get where do we get those? That is a great fashion item out of the bullpen. A little goth for me, but yeah, I got it. As long as you don't go with the white makeup. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you put a little fur on it. Keep <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those are great. Nice. Feliciano could get a modeling contract <laughs> with that. Sacks Fifth Avenue. And Leduca fouls away another fastball. By the way, Keith was supposed to be here tonight. What happened? Had a little fender bender. He's okay. Car's a little banged up. Oh. Airbag did not deploy. But he was going to have the weekend off anyway, so now it's a four-day weekend. Timing is everything. It's exactly right. Suffice to say, Keith is warmer than we oh, are. Yes. <laughs> the 0-2 to Laduca, and the changeup misses. One and two. Jamie Moyer up to 36 pitches working in the second inning. And Loduca trying to find a way to get Green home from third with two out. Well, I tell you, usually two pitchers who usually make it look easy are both laboring. And they usually both work very quickly. But on a night when Everybody standing on that field would love to have their pitcher working quickly. It's hard to do that when you're not feeling. It. Yeah, you're not feeling it, so they're having trouble with their control. Two pitchers who usually work up in the count, usually they're 0 2, 1 2. They both pitch behind in the count, although more is 1 2 here on the Duca. The Duca doing a good job of following off some good pitches. And the Duca takes a call, third strike, and he did not think so. Moyer coming to the inside corner, and Laduca is called out on strikes. Part of the batting order coming up for the Phillies, Utley, Howard, and Burrell. Three to two, Phil. Well, if you haven't finished your taxes yet, there's still time. Not that much time, but there's time. The tax team at Gilman Siosi can help. Just head out to Shea and stop by the Mets team store through April 15th. That's this Sunday, and get your taxes done for free by Gilman Siosi. And here's the Mets' upcoming schedule. Remember, all Mets home games on SNY are available in HD, presented by IO Digital Cable. Do you see in HD? And if you're in the car, be sure to listen to every Mets game on Sports Radio 66 WFAN. Weekend series with the Nationals starting tomorrow night. Then the Mets go to Philly and Florida for a quick trip before coming home to play the Braves the following weekend. 
Well, you can't take anything for granted as Chase Utley comes to the plate, but a lot of teams are going to get fat on the Nationals this summer. Well, the Nationals are playing in Atlanta, finishing up their series. They've lost six games in a row, and there's a Mike Pelfrey jersey. He's pitching tomorrow night. Chase Utley takes ball one. Pelfrey will make his 2007 debut on the mound for the Mets against Washington tomorrow. And it's going to be interesting to see how Pelfrey does as Glavin falls behind Utley 2 0 because after getting off to a great start in spring training, he didn't pitch well in that last game against Tampa Bay. And the couple of games he pitched on the minor league side over the last couple of weeks have been spotty as well. Utley gets under one, shallow right center, and easily calling one away. So for the first time, Lavin retires the first man in an inning. I think the disarming thing about Pelfrey in the last few starts you've seen a lot of walks, a couple hit batters in each start. Those are the kind of things you don't like to see because obviously telling you he's struggling with his control. Mentally, is there a little bit of a letdown after having made the team? Absolutely. I think uh, I told you in spring training, I said he's due for a start that doesn't work out so well because once you, f you do everything all winter to get ready to, to make the team, and once you make it, it's definitely a letdown for a while. Here's Ryan Howard who walked his first trip and he takes a strike from Glavin. And not only is it a letdown, but you made the team. But you kind of didn't because you're still at Port St. Lucie in Florida playing single A ball waiting for your chance to pitch in the big leagues. Lavin throws the curveball and it's one and one. Yeah, it is kind of odd. You know, the Mets uh, announced Pelfrey as the fifth starter. They come north, they play three different opening days, and Pelfrey's not a part of any of those. There's a strike, one and two. And now. He's down in Florida pitching for a single A team. It's got to be a letdown. That's a letdown, and also he's pitching against a single A team that knows that he's going to the big leagues in four or five days. They want to get their crack at a big league pitcher. Ahead one and two. Glavin works the outside and misses with the change up two and two. Glavin has been so much tougher against left hand hitters the last few years than he was earlier in his career. Side with the fastball three and two. In fact, wasn't there a theory there for a while when he was at, with Atlanta to stock the lineup with left handed hitters because it would take his change up away and his slider or curveball was really his third or fourth pitch? Now he's throwing the curveball more and he'll throw that change up inside against lefties. Goes with the change up and he strikes out Howard two away. Well, I think this is the best change up he's thrown all night because not only does he get this ball down. But he also gets it on the outside part, the Ryan Howard. One of the toughest things for a left-hander is to get that ball to come off those that pinky finger. When you get it come off that pinky finger, it'll come to the outside to the left-hander. So two out and nobody on. Lavin trying to work his first seamless inning as he takes on Pat Burrell, who walked his first time up. 3-2 fills in the third. As Burrell takes a strike, and Glavin looking a whole lot sharper here in the third. One and one to Burrow. This is a great game for Oliver Perez to watch. Glavin walked three in the first inning, had trouble with his control. In between innings, kind of sorted out mentally. And now, back, not in control, but back at least throwing strikes. And Burrow shoots one to center field. Easy play for Beltron coming in, and the side retires. So Glavin sets down the heart of the Phillies batting order, one, two, three. And Beltron will come up to lead off the bottom of the inning. And welcome back to Shea. Bottom three, the Phillies lead the Mets three to two as Jamie Moyer on the mound for the Phils facing Carlos Beltran to start us off here. You know, Jamie Moyer is certainly an old school kind of pitcher. He likes the fact about eating innings. I asked him what, how long he thinks he'll pitch. And he said, as long as I can go out there and give my team innings, I'll continue to do it. Eight of the last nine years, he's gone at least 200 innings. In fact, he said when he first came into the lead, he really looked up to Dwight Gooden and Ronnie Darling. And I said, well, why? So because of the innings they were able to eat up you look back and it makes sense 1985 Dwight Gooden 276 plus innings 
course, Ron Darling, I believe 248 innings. Now, Moyer also hates the pitch count. He said he can't stand the fact that 100 pitches tells a manager when to take a guy out. I said, well, how many pitches have you thrown the most in your career? He said, there's been times I've gone into the 140s. When you're done, you're done. Pitch count shouldn't matter. Back upstairs, Gary and Ronnie. Guys, Kevin, when you're throwing 78-mile-an-hour fastball, <laughs> the uh, stress of the pitches doesn't add up quite as much, does it? It's like... Um, uh, Wilbur Wood for the Chicago White Sox. Remember, he used to pitch both ends of the doubleheader because he threw the knuckleball. Here's Carlos Delgado, and the infield overshift is on this time as Moyer works him inside again. And you see that infield with Rollins playing to the right side of the bag and Utley out in the outfield. Carlos struck out his first time up against a pitcher he has owned over the years. And there's a strike, and Moyer gets even. By the way, I would have had the same innings as Dwight Gooden, but Davey always took me out prematurely. <laughs> so I want, I want that out there. No. Had to get Doug Siskin again. <laughs> That's right. David right on deck. That would shoots off the mask of Ruiz. You know, this is opening day week, and can I tell you, one of the funniest, Doug Sisk had a winner, and you see, you can see the game plan of Jamie Moyer. He's been working Delgado inside. I got Eddie Montague. I thought it was Ruiz. Montague right off the, the mask. But opening day, Doug Sisk had spent all spring training really being lambasted by the media because he came in a little overweight. So he gets up here. It's opening day. They announce his name. It's a cold day. He's got his coat on. He runs out to the line, and two Snicker bars fall out of his pocket. <laughs> so while we're standing there, there's two Snicker bars in the grass in front of Dougie to the national anthem, through all the festivities. And Moyer strikes out Delgado for the second time. So Moyer getting some revenge against Delgado. That's his third strikeout. His goal is fastball in, change up down, and now a little breaking ball on the outside part, trying to mix up his pitches against the guy that has owned him, just to make sure that Delgado cannot sit on anything. So for these two pitchers who struggled in the early going, Glavin gets the Phillies part of the batting order out one, two, three in the top of the inning. Moyer trying to do the same in the bottom of the inning with David Wright up. And he gets the curveball over nothing and one. For any young pitcher out there, don't let your start dictate your result. You can change the result. Just be patient. Try to stick to your game plan. Fastball misses and it's one and one. David bounced into a double play his first time up. That's got a run in the first, a run in the second, and each time had a chance for a whole lot more. After they scored in the first inning, they had first and second and nobody out, but Delgado struck out and Wright grounded into a double play. After scoring in the second, they had second and third and one out, but Reyes had a short fly ball and Laduca struck out. Change up and he swings over it two and two. His pitchers throw slow, slow, and slower. At some point, it almost like it looks like the hitters are swinging a bat in a pool. I mean, they just they slow the swing down of the hitters. On two and two, right rolls over the changeup. So, what's your approach if you're a hitter against a pitcher like this? Well, it, it's hard for hitters because they they figure they're facing a guy who doesn't have anything that you go, boy, you know, he can get me out with that pitch. So you want to kind of bite off more than you can chew. The way to approach it, you have to go the other way. You have to be patient because if you try to roll over, you're going to hit a lot of five to threes. Where it comes inside with the fastball and misses three and two. Moise Salou waiting on deck. Mets have had four hits over the first two innings plus. Down by a run as they bat in the third. On three and two right. Lifts one to center field. Plenty of room for Rowan. And the inning is over. So Moyer, just as Glavin did in the top of the inning, faces three, four, and five in the order and gets an odd one, two, three. Mets Weekly on SNY takes you behind the scenes this week with a complete wrap-up from the home opener. All the players and fans, all the excitement of a special day at Shea. Mets Weekly, new episode at a special time, Saturday at noon, exclusively on Sportsnet New York. Wes Helms leads off the fourth inning against Tom Glavin and takes a strike. Well, when you're older umpire, see, so you can ask the umpire, is that high? 
See, he's asking Eddie Montague, and he's given the nod. And when you're a veteran pitcher, you can have that correspondence with the umpire, and they'll let you know if it's up or down or if you just missed. There's a good changeup by Glavin 0 2. Doesn't Jamie Moyer, and he looked just like him walking off. Doesn't he sometimes remind you of the Tin Man? Oh, yeah, I see that. I definitely see that. Slap toward the hole and into right field, a base hit for Helms. Boy, there's a neat job by Helms on a tough pitch on 0 and 2, and he winds up with a base hit. Check out our Jeep around the majors. Great pitching job by Felix Hernandez, the 21 year old for the Mariners, throwing a one hitter against the Red Sox last night. Career win number 334 for Greg Maddox last night. And Brad Penny dominant in the Dodgers' shutout win of the Rockies last night. Speaking of Maddox and the Padres, you see what their bullpen has done so far yeah. this year? Well, just a continuation of the last couple of years. That bullpen has been amazing. I mean, one of the names that shoots out at is Clay Meredith has just added to that bullpen. Uh, Line Brink, of course, who the Mets were interested in. Helms without much speed at first. And of course, you still have Trevor Hoffman mm -hmm. saving games. But that trade that the Padres made last year when they sent Doug Mirabelli back to Boston, that's going to be one of the great trades of this decade. Yeah. There were some guys last year around the majors who had some amazing years that the Red Sox let get away, whether it's Freddie Sanchez of the Freddie Sanchez of the Pirates. Two and one to Rowan. Mike Gonzalez, who was 24 for 24 at some point last year in save opportunities, now with the Braves. Hanley Ramirez, rookie of the year. Yeah, the Padres not only got Clay Meredith in that deal, and he's just been phenomenal, but they also got a guy who's now their cleanup hitter, Josh Bard. Who's their number one catcher? All for a guy who can catch a knuckleball and do very little else. Popped up. And Delgado looks it easily and easily takes charge. And that's the first down. So one out and one on. Well, tonight, uh, something of an historic event. First time two lefties with 500 career starts have ever squared off in the oldest combined age for any lefties ever and the oldest combined age for any opposing starters since 1993 <laughs> when Charlie Huff who was the ace of the fledgling Florida Marlins hooked up against the Mets and Frank Tanana what was the line that we used about Tanana because he was hard throwing when he was with the Angels that he threw 90 in the 70s and 70 in the 90s that was a Todd Callis quote at the Mets welcome home dinner that year and it was right on. There's Moyer on deck who never threw in the 90s in any decade. <laughs> and Ruiz bounces one to short should be two. Reyes to easily and on the first double play side retire. Well, Glavin is settling into a groove and the Mets who have been adept at the twin killings this year. Different second baseman same result. Take Mass Transit to Shea as the series with the Nationals kicks off tomorrow night at 7:10. Tickets start at just five bucks. The weekend series continues Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Don't miss it. Go to Mets.com for your tickets. The return of Manny Acta to Shea Stadium, the new Washington skipper. And look at that. The Nationals have played 10 games now, including tonight. They have not scored a run in the first three innings in any of those games. That's unbelievable. Well, if Manny had any hair, it'd be turning gray <laughs> right now. Moise Salute takes ball one. Well, Manny is optionally bald. That's right. But uh, Manny held a, a team meeting after their loss last night to the Braves. Held them for about 20 minutes. He said he was very encouraging as Alou slams one toward the gap in left center field. And that's an extra base hit going to the wall. Now, Lou pulls in with his second double of the season, and man, he is just mashing everything. He's two for two tonight. And the Mets have the tying run in scoring position. Well, Jimmy Moore has got to live down in the strike zone, especially with that change of her fastball. And this one is neck high. And great job by Alou. See how he gets on top of that ball? Usually a pitch in that location is a pop-up or a fly ball. 
but he somehow pulls his hands in, gets on top of it, and drives that ball. That was smoked to left center field. So Mo is starting to get some results from all these hard hit balls. See that contact. Look at the eyes right on the ball. Does not take it off. Watches it leave the bat. Sean Green pulls one foul. Sean was hit by a pitch his first time up. Off to a rollicking start after a very difficult spring training. See that on base percentage up to 417. Three for nine with runners in scoring position so far this year. And trying to pick up Al Lou. And now Moyer ahead of him 0 and 2. Now, man, normally you get a, a, a leadoff man at second base, you say, especially if you're tying right, you want to advance the runner. But if you're the number seven hitter, do you take that approach? I think that you would, uh, it, with two strikes, you might want to take that approach. But before you have two strikes, you're trying to drive him in. You don't want to give it to the eighth hitter or the pitcher spot when it comes up. And it's too early in the game. On 0 and 2, Green leans out of the way. 1 and 2. Sean's a California guy. He's not used to this cold weather. Played indoors in Toronto, played in LA, played in Arizona. In the air. Rollins out, shallow left field. And that's the first out as Alou holds it second. So one away. And here's Damien Easley who flied out to right his first time up. That's down by a run as they batted the fourth. Too easily. You know, we mentioned that Jamie Moyer's first start against the Mets was in 1986. And I was looking through the lineup for the Mets in that game. Mookie led off. Tuffle. Kevin Mitchell played right field. So that was the first thing that stood out to me. No strawberry. And the curveball misses 2 0. Carter played first base, which Whoa. meant. That Mex didn't play. So you had to look at that. All right hand hitting lineup against Boyer was a rookie left. Now, what's with Mex ducking the left hander? I guess he just had a flashback. That's why he's not here tonight. <laughs> now, Rick Anderson, who's the pitching coach for the Minnesota Twins, is the pitcher that evening. So two of the three players traded for David Cohn were in the lineup Ed Hearn and Rick Anderson. Uh, Moro Gazzo was the third. And now it's 3 0 to Easley. But I. Why would Keith not play? Why is Carter playing first base? <laughs> That's Timmy Tuffle. Strawberries duck in the lefty as well. Now I will add a caveat. We didn't mention this part of it. Three and out easily, and there's a strike. It was the second game of a doubleheader. Yeah, Keith had in his contract at those times. He only played one game <laughs> of doubleheaders. So. <laughs> Glavin waits on deck. Mookie was the only guy who had two hits in that game. Easily trying to get Al Lou home from second with one out. And he takes a strike. Good pitch on the inside edge. Three and two. Whenever people try to describe that team, what made it so special, think about it. Kevin Mitchell was a utility player on that team. He would go on to be not only a home run champ, but an MVP. You know the most amazing thing about that? With Mitchell playing shortstop, <laughs> yeah. thinking about how large he eventually got. I mean, he was pretty big then. And there's ball four, and the Mets have two men on. So Moyer walks easily. That's his first walk of the night. He's also hit a batter, and Glavin will come up with two men on again. Glavin came up in the same situation in the second, first and second, and one out, and laid down such a perfect bunt. That Helms had to rush his throw and he threw it away and a run came home on the air. He's in the same opportunity here. See if he can double up as the Phillies congregate on the mound, telling everyone West Helms is letting everyone know what play they're going to run. I wouldn't be surprised if they run the wheel play here only because of 
the ability of Tommy Glavin to be able to bunt at the third. The Phillies might be the only team that you think about bunting the first only because Ryan Howard is not that strong of a fielder. Now if Glavin sees them run the wheel, does he swing? I think you have to swing. Shows the bunt, they play straight up, and he takes the fastball in tight. Now Lou, the tying run at second, easily at first with one out. Three to two Phillies, fourth inning. Reyes waiting to follow. Glavin now with four sacrifices in his first three starts. Bunts that one foul, and it's one and one. Let's see, this is perfect technique. Knees bent, tries to deaden it. Usually early in the count, you'll see Glavin try to make a perfect bunt because he's such a good bunter. That he's, you know, he tries to make it perfect. If it doesn't happen, then he will be less than perfect on his next one. Make sure he gets it down. Well, I've been watching everything. It, Rollins went into the mound to talk to Moyer. Moyer going over to talk to the left side of the end. Clavin's watching all this, <laughs> trying to just figure out whether they're going to run that wheel. What you want to do when you're bunning is you want to catch the ball with the bat. They fake the wheel. Glavin bunts it. Ruiz has no one to throw to it. Third throws low to first, and he Utley bails him out. Well, Ruiz looked to third base, but Helms was not at the bag. Not sure if he fell or if he just didn't retreat. Well, another great bunt. Looks like Tommy's going to swing. He fakes the Butcher Boy swing, and then lays down a perfect bunt, and Helms is having trouble with that wet grass. He did fall down why he wasn't back to cover and then Utley nice play there so Glavin with his second sacrifice of the night and his fifth in three starts so now two in scoring position for Reyes who flied out in the second after singling in the first and he lays off that sinker low and in Reyes has already driven in nine runs this year, second in the National League. He can pick up two with a base hit here. And the changeup misses. And it's two and out. Now Lou, the tying run at third, easily at second with two down. Three to two Phillies, fourth inning. With Loduca waiting to follow. There's a strike, two and one. Pitchers can help themselves so much if they can handle the bat. And in their heyday in Atlanta, all those pitchers did. Maddox and Smoltz and Glavin and Avery. Reyes lines up face hit. Now Luke comes in with a tying run. Here comes Easley. Burrell's throw to the plate. Not in time, and the Mets take the lead. Good pitch, cut her in from Jamie Moore trying to get Reyes to pop it up like he did in his last at bat. But Reyes, this ball's down a little bit. He's a little quicker, pulls it in that hole, and good job by getting down. Good slide here. Damien Easley showing a lot of speed. So Reyes with his 10th and 11th runs batted into the season, and he gives the Mets a 4 to 3 lead. Here's Loduca. And Reyes reading that move by Moyer. Coming into the night, Miguel Cabrera with 12 RBIs to lead the league. See Sandy Alomar Sr. with a good wave getting easily in. And see, he slides to the inside part of the plate. Good recognition that Ruiz is on the third base side. Come to the inside and score a run. Didn't have to be quite as creative as Delgado the other day. <laughs> and Leduca shoots one foul. 
Think about that Delgado slide coming to the front side and reaching back. I didn't think that with the angle of his body that he could even reach home plate without hurting himself. But Carlos was quick to say after the game, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, catcher's on the third base side. He's got to come and get it, come all the way around. So he do that little fade slide in the inside. Loduca one for two, singled and struck out. Good change up by Moyer. Not only did he throw a great pitch, but he had Reyes going back to the bag. Change up down and away. Took a little more off of that pitch, which had the Duke away out in front. Reyes not getting his best lead against Moyer. I think he's got Reyes a little confused. Duca gets under one and it'll be easy for Rollins. And that retires the side. But the Mets take the lead on Reyes's two run hit. Jimmy Rollins will get to turn it back to the Phillies in the fifth. He's done plenty of damage already tonight with home runs in his first two at bats. Sportsnet New York is giving you the chance to prove that you know New York sports. Enter for a chance to join the panel on Daily News Live with the New York Sports Contender Contest. Log on to SNY.TV to enter and find out how to submit your audition video. Tom Glavin with the lead for the first time tonight as Jamie Boyer leads off the fifth inning and takes a strike. And Glavin has really settled in the last couple of innings after a difficult start. Moyer went down looking his first time up. Rounds one weekly to Damien Easley. And there's one out in the fifth. So here's Jimmy Rollins with the Phillies down by a run. Led off the ball game in the first inning on a 3-1 pitch and clouded his fourth home run of the year. And for good measure with a man on in the second, he did it again. That would give the Phillies a 3-1 lead at the time. Now the Mets have rebounded to go in front four to three and here's Rollins for the third time. Rollins is now your National League leader in home runs with those five. There's a strike one and one. Shortstop Reyes hurrying in against the speed of Rollins and they're two away. So two out and nobody on time for a baseball night in New York update. Let's go to Matt Yellow. All right. Thank you very much Gary. It's the Angels and Indians from Milwaukee. If you can follow that good for you. Bottom eight two men on Travis Hafner with a three run shot his first of the year. The Indians take it in Milwaukee from the Angels four to two. That wasn't just a shot. That was a bomb. Hafner's yeah. got some pop, oh, doesn't he? Man, and he hit that off Scott Shields, who's one of the best setup relievers in baseball. With the human muscle, Travis Hafner. Oh, they call him Pronk. <laughs> That's right. The Project Slash Donkey. <laughs> Here's a strike to Victorino, one and one. Meanwhile, in Baltimore tonight, Kansas City and Baltimore, no score in the sixth. The two big free agent signings, Gilmesh. And Steve Traxel <laughs> in a pitcher's duel. One and two to Victorino. Traxel's pitched very well Real for nice. the Orioles. Pitched a good game against the Yankees last week. The Orioles, well, there's the first run. See, now we're talking up Traxel and he gives up a run. <laughs> but uh, the Orioles were involved in a scoreless game with the Tigers last night. Nobody scored in that game until the 12th when Craig Monroe hit a grand slam for the Tigers. Two and two to Victorino. Well, that doesn't happen very often, right? To go into extra innings and the way the team scores is a grand slam. Monroe, he's some kind of talent. Two and two to Victorino. Lavin tries the inside and misses. Three and two. Tommy showed a little emotion tonight. 
keeps you warm. <laughs> Torino keeps the bat alive. Chase Utley waiting on deck. It's been a rough night for both Lavin and Moyer, but they're both sticking with it. Lavin up to 81 pitches now in the fourth inning. And Victorino pulls one foul. And these long at bats don't help. Well, the Phillies have proven in this early part of the season that's the kind of team they're going to be. If you don't throw strikes, they are not going to swing. Not they're looking for walks, but they're very patient. Cued off the end of the bat, foul. Delgado just making sure. <laughs> Sometimes those balls will curl back into fair territory. And if the hitter doesn't run, he might get embarrassed. The only problem with that is he was running, so if that did come fair, you're going to be in trouble. That's why he picked it up. Victorino's one of those guys that uh, is a hustling kind of guy. But see here, this is where he should pick it up right now. Because if it does come back, Victorino was running by him. Two shots. Well, Glavin just has not had that put away pitch at times. This will be the ninth pitch to Victorino. And he pops this one up foul. Right hoping for a play. And he got it! His arms just long enough. He's no wax statue. <laughs> right reaching in. And the Phillies are done in the top of the fifth. Well, they've always said one of the marks of a great pitcher is when you can win without your best stuff. And right now, Glavin, without his best at all, is leading. But as a starting pitcher, he's done some great things at bat to help himself. Those two sacrifice bunts have led to a couple of runs. Carlos Beltran drove in the first med run with a first inning single. He's also popped up one for two. And he lays off Moyer's first offering, one and oh. Carlos has now hit in nine straight games to start the season. Has nine runs batted in, right behind Reyes for the club lead. Pops a foul out of play, one and one. Are you telling me today that Jamie Moyer, I know he's married to Digger Phelps' daughter, but they have, um, I think her name's Karen. Do they have six children? Six kids, yeah. It's, just a, it's not heard of in this day and age that someone has six children. That's Dale Murphy. Dale Murphy, Murphy had, Murphy. what, seven or eight boys? And then Chris Spire had a lot of uh, children, also five or six. Of course, Melvin Mora had five at once. They had quintuplets. That's right. And uh, Doug Strange had quadruplets. Wow. With his wife. One and two to Beltron. One big happy. <laughs> One would hope. Struck him out. Moyer coming upstairs to fan Beltron. One away. Well, after throwing any change up cutters inside, Moyer goes upstairs on Beltran and surprises him with his fastball that. Really, he threw by him. It's hard to say that because he's only thrown 78 miles an hour. But after all those slow pitches, slow offerings, that fastball gets by Beltron. So one out and nobody on. Here's Delgado, who's been befuddled by Moyer tonight, which has not been the norm in their head-to-head -head meetings. Seven career home runs against Moyer, but not tonight. And he dribbles this one right back to the originator. And there are two away. So Moyer has made Beltron and Delgado at times tonight look bad. Oh, just a little cutter slider away. And Beltron, you see that front shoulder opens up and it's just well placed pitch right in the outside corner and off the end of the bat of Delgado. He's got to go write that down in his book <laughs> because that is not what he was accustomed to in the past against Moyer. And remember that Jamie Moyer began his career with the Cubs in 1986, and it really wasn't until six or seven years later that he first began to prosper as a big league pitcher. As a strike to right, nothing and one. You know, Moyer went down to the minor leagues in 92 for the full season, wound up in Baltimore after that, and then Boston, and it wasn't until he went to Seattle in the middle of 1996. So. 
That's almost a decade after his career began that he finally found consistency. In Seattle, he became a star. One and two to right. Well, they always thought that he would have a lot of success in Chicago because they thought he was a ground ball pitcher, but he's not. Six of his outs tonight have come on fly balls, and if you give up a lot of fly balls in Wrigley Field, you're going to be hurt during the course of the summer. One and two to right, and David takes just inside, two and two. What is that? <laughs> Fouled away. Is that the entire? Is that an ad? It's an ad. Is that the entire ad? That's the entire ad. What's it for? For a packaging company that will ship and pack your boxes if you. Oh, there. Is there more? That. Oh, I see. Shipping and storage. Okay, now, now I've got a little better idea. Because just by itself, that logo, I, I'm not sure what product I'm buying. <laughs> so to the right, and he takes the curveball off his foot. And so Bright goes to first base, hit by a pitch. Boyer, I don't think is certain that that ball hit right. Well, it's a curveball down and in, and Wright does not move right off the toe. It's a second batter Moyer's hit in this game. So I guess the question wasn't whether it hit him, but whether he made an effort to get out of the way. Yes. How many times are we going to have that come up in this series? Yesterday, I don't think I've ever seen it before. You had Delgado, who struck out on a pitch that hit him. And Utley, who was hit by a pitch and almost struck out, took most of a swing, and the Mets felt that he took a full swing. Twice in one game, yeah. we usually see that once a year. year. So here's Al Lou, who is two for two, and crushed one to left center for a double his last time up. He scored two runs in this game. Right at first and two down, and Moyer throws over. David has one steal so far this year after stealing 20 last year. Moyer is not looking like he's very easy to run on. Well, what he does great is he kind of holds that leg up and just makes sure that you're not going, then goes to the plate. Fools Alou with the changeup. Surprised more pitchers don't do that with Alou. Well, it, well, the changeup, especially early in the count, right? Because right? he's such a first ball hacker. Loose singled up the middle to lead off the second, double to left center to lead off the fourth. Four to three, New York, fifth inning. There goes Wright. Got a big jump. Ruiz's throw is well too late. And Wright got a huge jump on Moyer that time, and he has his second steal of the year. Well, you could say either that he had a good read of Moyer, but usually what happens to the left hander. Is that they'll just pick a pitch to run on. Wright got a good jump and gets in scoring position for a loop. Sometimes if you leave too early against the lefties, you can steal the base anyway, even if they pick you off. So now, Alou looking to pick up right from second. Alou is just one for ten with runners in scoring position this year. But it's not that he hasn't hit some balls hard. Look at the one he hit last night with the bases loaded. That might have been the big at bat of the game, to tell you the truth. The Mets had a chance to really have a big inning and hit that ball sharply to Utley, who turned a double play. It was in the fourth inning last night. The Mets had the bases loaded and nobody out. Sean Greeting waiting to follow. One and two to Alou. Moise Salou has always been known as a great April hitter. 
Lifetime 330 in April. Guess what he's hitting now? 333. <laughs> Struck him out with a changeup. Good pitch by Jamie Moyer to get Al Lou and end the inning. First time Al Lou's been retired tonight. That's five strikeouts for Jamie Moyer. That's still with a one run lead going to the sixth. The Jets season may be over, but SNY is still in the game during the offseason. This week's show has an exclusive sit-down with Jets quarterback Chad Pennington, who shares his thoughts on 2007. Jets Nation, new episode this week at a special time, Saturday at 11.30, only on Sportsnet New York. Well, Tom Glavin gave up two home runs to Jimmy Rollins in the first two innings. Since then, he has faced the minimum. Chase Utley leads off and takes a strike from Glavin, who has found himself over these last few innings. Utley's flied out and popped up 0 for 2, off to a slow start in 2007. But he is a terrific hitter. One and one to Utley. Now, Glavin threw 113 pitches on Saturday in Atlanta. He's pitching on normal rest tonight. And he's up to 86 pitches here early in the sixth inning. Hey Gary, this is the beginning to get through. You're going through the meat of their order, Utley, Howard, and Burl. Usually 105 to 110 is usually where they go with, with Tommy. So he'd like to have a quick inning if he could. Philadelphia Phillies are tough to get through quickly, though. Two and two to Utley. Well, you'd say that in your third start of the season that bounce back is not an issue. But when you're 41 years old, you have to wonder whether maybe it is at this point. 41, and also I think a lot of it has to do with if he stays in the game, do the Mets have a long inning, offensive inning? Th little things like that. Good pitch, and Utley wastes it away. Still 2-2. Two and two. Glavin has looked exasperated yeah. quite often in this game. Cranky. He's a little cranky out there today. I, I think he thought that last pitch was an out pitch, but you know, Utley's just a good hitter. And he pulls that one foul. And there have been a lot of long at bats for the Phillies tonight that have really upped Glavin's pitch count. I think he's just cold. <laughs> That'll make you cranky too. And Utley watches it wide, and now it's three and two. Ryan Howard to follow, and then Pat Burrell here in the sixth, with Glavin nursing a one run lead. Three two to Utley. In the air to right field, playable for Sean Green. One away. So Glavin's now retired six in a row. And 10 of the last 11. Pitch count up to 92. But remember, early in the game, he was throwing more balls than strikes. Look how, look how that's changed. Well, here's Howard, who's walked and struck out tonight. He's already walked 11 times. This is the Phillies ninth game and that's the most walks for anybody in the National League. Which figures. <laughs> Good change up by Glavin at Howard way out in front. Well, it looks like Ryan Howard trying to sit on maybe a first pitch fastball from Glavin pulls the string. See how he covers that outside part of the plate. That's why he has the ability to go the other way. One and one to Howard. No, he rested that MVP away from Albert Pool. Just some pool so far this year. 176. Really struggling there in St. Louis. The St. Louis is struggling to score runs. Although they've been winning. Winning, yeah. They've been getting great pitching. Pulled down to first and behind the bag. Foul. Very close to being a fair ball. Cardinals have won four straight 
And five out of six since getting swept in that opening series by the Mets. Who's been their ace so far? Braden Lubin. <laughs> That's right. Chris Carpenter on the disabled list after making that opening night start. One and two to Howard. Another change up, and this one he rolls over. Still one and two. Pitch count expanding. Two and two now to Howard. Well, it looks like a little cutter here as he tries to work it out of the outside corner. Good pitch by Glavin. He's up in the count. Now it's 2-2. Two -two. Wants to throw something down in the strike zone. And Howard swings and misses. And Glavin with the strikeout. Second time he's gotten Howard tonight. His fourth of the game. Just a great changeup from Glavin. You can see it. Last time he struck him out, it was a changeup away. This time he throws one down and in. Just the pitch that Keith Hernandez said this many times here. Just the pitch left-handers just do not see. They see anything inside, it's usually hard. And it's really a change in pitching philosophy. We've talked about Glavin pitching differently against the right-hand batters. But he's enjoyed so much more success these last couple of years against the lefties because he'll pitch them inside like that. And he'll combine it. He'll throw fastball in, then change up. So the sequ sequence of pitches you'll see to these hitters is that they will see stuff that's hard in to them. And then a change up off of that. And Burrow watches it wide, 2-0. Oh. McGlavin up to 100 pitches now. And after walking three batters in the first inning he hasn't walked anybody since has really settled in so you wonder whether he'll take a turn at bat in the bottom of the inning three and oh now to Burrell of course if the uh, Phillies get a couple of base runners here that would seal the deal so Jose Valentin with a bat it's not used to sitting around <laughs> Wes Helms waiting on deck now Burrell will swing three and oh we've seen that plenty of times. He's got 36 career home runs against the Mets. He's got three of them against Glavin. But Burrell's been a very patient hitter so far. Takes a strike. Good pitch. Three and one. He doesn't groove many. No. Even on three and oh. Let's see if they double up inside. Yep, another fastball. In the air to deep left field. Back goes Al Lou, and he has room at the edge of the track. Burrow just missed. And a good cut at a 3-1 fastball. But Glavin gets the heart of the batting order to keep that one-run lead. That's been a great study in perseverance tonight for these two veteran left-handers. The oldest combined age for two starting lefties in any game in big league history and neither started well. Sean Green takes a strike. But both Glavin and to a lesser extent Moyer have persevered. And they're both in the game. As the Mets bat on the bottom of the sixth. Green has been hit by a pitch and popped up. And he takes a strike 0-2. Well this is here what you do when you have a veteran starter. The manager will go up and ask Tommy how he feels. And depending on what answer he gets. It wasn't an unqualified yes. <laughs> <laughs> As Green leans out of the way. And so the Mets are going to get the bullpen cranking here with Glavin due up third in the inning. That's one of those. I'll go another one. Wink, wink, not dot. If you really need me to. <laughs> and Green lines one down the right field line. Fair ball. On his way to second as Victorino digs it out. And Sean Green stands at second with a leadoff double. Sean Green continues to hit. Tough pitch here. Green had to go down and get this changeup. 
pass there. He almost bends his knees, lowers his body, gets down with the pitch, and breaks it into right field. But isn't that why a lot of lefties won't throw that pitch inside against left-hand hitters because it works into a left-hand hitter's wheelhouse? What you have to do is say you can't throw it for a strike. If you throw a changeup inside, it's got to be down. Joe Smith up in the bullpen for New York. Francisco Rosario just acquired by the Phillies this past week. Up in the Philadelphia bullpen. Glavin with the edge. Damien Easley at the plate. With a runner at second looking to advance him. But he can't shoot the ball to the right side. Lasting's Millage out on deck to bat for Glavin. So here's a spot where you're looking to advance the runner to try and build an insurance run. So Glavin done after 103 pitches over six innings. You wouldn't have thought that after the way he started tonight. The breaking ball misses one and one. Glavin walked three after giving up a home run to Rollins in that first inning. Gave up another home run to Rollins in the second and was practically perfect after that. I think after he gave up the whole second home run to Rollins which really made him angry. I think he said you know what I'm not going to keep pitching like this I'm three one two and one two and oh on every hitter I'm going to start being a little more aggressive once he got more aggressive things have been a lot easier. Well, Rollins has been the sum total of the Phillies offense tonight. Glavin hung around long enough to qualify for a win if the Mets bullpen can get it done. Looking for number two hundred and ninety two tonight against Jamie Moyer who's won 217 easily behind one and two and takes the curveball. Moyer knowing that easily wants to get that ball to the right side. But there's two ways to stop a guy from hitting the ball to the right side slow stuff or pitch in. Here's the home run by Rollins and I think this two run home run that just cleared the wall in left field. You watch Tommy's reaction. That made him angry. I think after that he just said, no, enough's enough. I'm not going to pitch behind anymore. I'm mad as hell and I'm not <laughs> going to take it, it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Network, right? Great Peter Finch. Let's see what Easley can do here on two and two. And he watches it wide and now it's three and two. So Moyer trying very hard to keep easily from advancing the runner but now he's in danger of putting him on base with Millage on deck to pinch hit. As Rosario gets ready in the bullpen for the fill. Big pitch here for Moyer. To the right side right over the bag that'll advance the runner great job by easily first out green moves over to third. As we check out our New York Lottery box score, Jose Reyes with the two run single that gave the Mets their first lead of the night. Jose Salou with a big night with the bat. Tom Glavin helping his cause with a couple of sacrifice. As the Mets have a 4 3 lead and looking for more here in the sixth. And now with Glavin out of the game, Lastings Millage will pinch in. And Millage getting a very nice hand from the crowd, many of whom probably understand. That this could be his last at bat in the big leagues for a while. Mike Pelfrey due to be activated tomorrow, and certainly the odds are that Millage will be sent down. Infield in for Millage with Green at third and one out. And Lasting's a little aggressive, pops the first one up. And that's the second out. Well, you can certainly understand in that situation, young hitter. Not getting very many at bats, and he's just up there hacking at a first pitch changeup from Jamie Moore. Well, that's where age and wisdom got the young hitter. Moyer knew he's going to be aggressive. Listen, when guys are on base, pitcher's got to keep in his mind that he gets anxiety, he gets anxious trying to stop those runs from scoring, but also the hitters get very anxious and want to score the run. Let's get a quick update from the studio with Matt Yala. All right, the Tigers in Toronto, top of the fourth, and Brandon Inge comes through, driving in a run. The Tigers go up 4-0. Inge also homered in this game, his first RBIs of the season. 
5 2 Detroit in the seventh there. Very interesting trip to the mound by Rich Duby. Because Jose Reyes has reached the point in his career where you might consider intentionally walking him in this spot. We were talking about that in the first week of the season. When do you get to that point with Reyes? You're right there now, yeah. but I mean they're gonna pitch to him, but I'm sure they'll pitch awfully careful. Reyes is two for three tonight. He's driven in a pair of runs, trying to get Green home from third with two out. And Moyer misses with the changeup. Green led off the inning with a double. Reyes now with 11 runs batted in. One behind Miguel Cabrera for the league lead. It's 2 0. Joe Smith will be on to pitch for the Mets when we go to the seventh. Trying to give Glavin an extra run here. And Boyer looking like he wants no part of Reyes. Yeah, this is a pitch around here. And now he's going to get the intentional pass. So Laduca will get an opportunity. And again, it's instructive. This is an at bat where maybe in the past Reyes would have jumped at something early in the count, but it's harder to. Get him to do that now, and they eventually have to intentionally walk. And I think he's getting smarter. He knows the situation. He knows what the pitcher is trying to do. It's obvious that Moyer is going to try to pitch around the strike zone and see if, you know, if he had any fish biting. If Reyes was going to try to offer it in those pitches, and he didn't. Well, they've got the right hander ready in the bullpen, but it looks like Charlie Manuel is going to stay with Jamie Moyer here to pitch to Paul Oduka, who's one for three tonight. Rosario is all warmed up and watching now. Lawyer up to 105 pitches now. We'll take on Laduca. Green at third and Reyes at first with two down. We'll see if Reyes tries to swipe one here. Here's a strike to Laduca. Ball on a base hit back in the first inning. Got called out on a close pitch in the second and popped up in the fourth. This might be the one time. That Reyes might stay put, give Laduca a chance to shoot that hole because he can hit the ball to that right side so well. Howard holding the bag, opening up that hole. There goes Reyes, pitches high, Ruiz fakes the throw, and Reyes walks into second with his fifth stolen base of the year. Well, they're giving it to him, so he took it. Ruiz with the fake, trying to get. Green napping on third, not going to happen to the veteran. Nobody even covering at second base. So now a base hit could play two for Laduca. With Green at third and Reyes at second. You got a pitch to Laduca. You got Beltron on deck. On one and one, he hit him. And now the bases are loaded. The third batter, Jamie Moyer, is hit tonight. He hit Green back in the second. He hit right on the toe in the fifth. And now he pumps Loduca and Charlie Manuel's got a problem. He's got a rookie right hander who he's never seen before in the bullpen and he's got Beltron coming up. Well trying to get inside to brush Loduca off the plate. Loduca just stands his ground takes it on the tricep down to first. Well Charlie's got no choice he's got to stay with Boyer here at least stick with the known quantity you would think. Well, he's trying to get as much advice as he can. <laughs> On the bench. Also, you know, if you're an opposing manager, I think you'd rather see Beltron bat right handed here rather than turn him around to his left side. Well, the Philly bullpen has been a big problem early in the season. And so Moyer will stay on to face Beltron, who's one for three tonight. Drove in a run with a first inning sink. Moyer up to 108 pitches. Base is loaded two out. Four-year-old Jamie Moyer trying to keep his team in the game. There's a strike. Nothing at all. Carlos Delgado, who 
who's had a rough night against Moyer waiting on deck. Green is at third. He led off the inning with a double. Reyes at second, and Leduca at first with two out. And the crowd trying to stay warm and root on the Mets at the same time. Hit foul. 0 oh, 2 to Beltra. It's two and two. about Moyer and they say when he gets in tough circumstances like this it's almost like he waits to hit her out he'll pause he'll step off the mound it's almost like he's trying to slow play him green at third Reyes at second Loduca at first with two down four to three New York sixth inning behind on the count trying to figure out what Boyer is going to do next. Sides turn just a little bit more. Warner's got nowhere to put him. The merry-go-round will be in motion now with three and two and two down. Payoff to Beltron. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Beltron slams the bat down as Moyer somehow finds his way out of sixth inning trouble. An Arctic night? No, it's just Shea Stadium in April. Two veteran left-handers going head-to-head. -head. It didn't start well for Tom Glavin as Jimmy Rollins took him deep, not once but twice. But the Mets battling back against Moyer. Reyes' two-run single put him in the lead. A little defensive help. Moyer could have had things go much worse for him, but a huge strike out of Beltron with the bases loaded leaves it a one-run Met lead as we head to the seventh at Shea. Moyer, the veteran, working with the rookie catcher Ruiz. And they got the job done. It's nice to see that. And that's an education for a young catcher right there. Well, Joe Smith in yesterday's ball game stranded the bases loaded, saving Pedro Feliciano some runs. Worked in the third yesterday after 
getting the final out of the eighth stayed on and worked around a leadoff walk in the ninth Wes Helms one for two tonight. So Glavin leaves after six innings allowed three runs and four hits walked three struck out four two home runs both to Rollins. But he leaves with the lead and now Helms shoots it up the middle and Reyes can't get it and the Phillies have the leadoff man on. So the tying run aboard Aaron Rowan coming up. Let's check in with Kevin Burkhardt. Well guys if you're wondering about the mental state of Oliver Perez after yesterday's affair when he let up seven walks and two and two thirds it was actually pretty good today. He told me that he pretty much forgot about that outing by the time he left the ballpark and he's already looking forward to his next start. That'll be Monday in Philadelphia. However one thing he did discover while watching video is a mechanical flaw. Now, I'm no pitching coach. Basically what he told me is that when he was during his delivery instead of his leg coming up like it's supposed to be his back was meeting his leg to kind of form the, the weird arm angle that was coming through. So he says that's something that he's got to correct for his next start. But good news is his spirits were up. Now we'll see if he can correct that mistake by Monday guys. The maddeningly inconsistent Oliver Perez and you know for every step you take forward every two steps forward sometimes you take one step back. Yeah, and, then, and we were talking about it earlier today. I think today is a great ball game for him to watch. Glavin started out uh, three walks, really struggling with his control, but then pulled it together, and and, and that's what you can do, and that's that's how you win ball games. There's a reason why if he wins this game, he's eight away from 300. As you can see, when you watch him, this is yesterday's ball game. This is three different pitches, three different arm angles, one on top, one on the bottom, and that's what happens is that. He's always trying to find that consistency and like you said it can be maddening at times to try to find it. Meanwhile Joe Smith's struggling a little bit with his command here and it's one and one. See that see that there's one here there's one down here and when you have that big of a difference between where you throw you're going to have in inconsistency and you're going to throw a lot of balls now granted you hope not seven walks like yesterday's game but that's how it goes. Just a foul by Rowan it's one and two and, and we, we talked about it yesterday that's the one thing that Rick Peterson has been trying to reinforce all spring as you look at Scott Schoenweiss warming up that Perez to be successful has got to stay in one arm slot and he and Paul LaDuca both tried to reinforce it during the game but it didn't take. Smith ahead on the count one and two looking for the double play ball. And the breaking ball in there for a call strike three. Rowan arguing about it with Ed Montague. Well it's that slider from Smith that stays on the inside part. Watch it. It starts inside comes just a little bit back and you can see how difficult a pitch it is just by the way Laduca had to catch that. You can see it's on the plate and usually you won't get a call from the umpire because of the way he caught it but that ball catches a lot of the plate and Rowan says it's down. So one out and one on and here's Ruiz the catcher and he chops one to second should be two easily to Reyes and back to first double play side retired. Joe Smith comes on works around the leadoff single gets the Mets second double play of the night still four to three New York. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, time for our Aflac trivia question. Jamie Moyer started for the Phils tonight. He's the fourth pitcher to start against the Mets at age 44 or older. Who, pray tell, are the other three? That's a good question. Yeah. We gave you one earlier tonight yes. if you were really paying attention. Clay Condry takes over the pitching for the Phils as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Well, Condry's had a nice start for the Phillies. Struck out the first five batters he's faced. In this young season, but hasn't pitched in five days. Condry just is 31 years old. He kicked around the minor leagues for a long time, got a couple of cups of coffee with the Padres in 02 and 03 before surfacing with the Phillies last year. Here's Delgado. Glad, I guess, to see Moyer out of the game, the way he struggled against Jamie Moyer tonight. And Condry works him up and in. Delgado who had owned Moyer in the past struck out twice and hit a dribbler back to the mound. That's had a chance to add to their 4 3 lead in the sixth got a lead off double loaded the bases but Moyer finished with a flourish by striking out Beltron 2 and 0. Oh. And you know it was interesting watching Beltron after that strikeout slam that bat down and I think that says it all 
about the way hitters react to both these starters tonight. Well, the frustration level is up there because they don't have anything that you, you, you think to yourself. They don't have one nasty pitch that's going to get me out. But the frustration level's up because they mix up their pitches. And right there, a 79 mile an hour fastball from Jamie Moore was enough to strike out Beltron. Not supposed to beat you. <laughs> Beltron's still talking about it. <laughs> 3-0 to Delgado, and he takes a strike. Well, the Phillies' bullpen was effective last night with Antonio Alfonseca pitching the eighth and Tom Gordon the ninth, but questions abound about whether the Philadelphia bullpen is deep enough to get them through the long season and protect leads and keep them in games. Into the shift. And Utley on the outfield grass. One away. So one out and nobody on. Weekday afternoons between 4 and 6. Log on to CW11.com for live traffic updates for the CW11's commuter cast. Check with commuter cast before you hit the road to find the fastest way home or the easiest way to shave. David Wright 0 for 2. He was hit by a pitch and stole a base in the fifth. Well, we mentioned it earlier, four straight games. He's gotten a hit his last time up to keep his hitting streak alive. This could possibly be his last time up tonight. And he takes a strike from Condry. Fastball is supposed to be down and away. Got away from Clay Conji running up and in with David Wright. Clay Conji from Beaumont, Texas. Where it never feels like this during the baseball season. Two and one the count. It's actually not bad now because the wind has died down significantly. It's not warm, <laughs> but it's a little more livable if you have a blanket. <laughs> and Wright watches the fastball for a strike, two or two. Moise Salou waiting on deck. Anything you can do to stay warm. Keep that neck warm. <laughs> Three and two to David. That's just waiting for Wright to settle into a, a real hot streak. On three and two, he lashes one the other way down the right field line. That's an extra base hit bounding into the corner. And Wright does it again with a late hit. He's going to try for three. The relay throw by Utley to third base is not in time. David Wright with his first triple of the year. Well, see the slider. You can see that big dot hanging on the outside part of the plate. Good job by Wright going the other way. And that's a good sign. Whenever you see David Wright getting hits, not only to the right side, but driving that ball. Look at those eyes right on that ball. He's driving the ball to the right side with power. He's starting to get locked in. David had five triples last year. And there's his first one of this season. So now the infield comes in for Moise Salou. And Condry almost throws it to the backstop, 1-0. Well, David Wright, it'd be nice if he did it a little earlier in the game, but he keeps on getting base hits every day. He now has a 21-game hitting streak dating back to last year. Now, it used to be they didn't count hitting streaks over the winter. But you know, ever since that Jimmy Rollins streak, they've started to do that, it seems. And now Lou drives a base hit to left center. That'll bring home Wright. 
Boise Salou with his third hit of the game, and it's 5-3 to three New York. Well, the Mets tack on an insurance run, and Boise Salou just continues to scorch it. When he is right, he is an RBI machine, sinker down and in. And if you're going to go inside to Moise Salou, you better have something on it because he is just too quick inside to throw the ball there. I mean, it's a good sinker. It's down on the knees. But he is just so quick on that fastball, you just cannot throw it by him. Well, now Lou has hit into some hard outs lately. Not tonight. Three hits and four at bats. And the Mets adding to their lead. You know, the Mets lead the National League in runs scored, but runs have not been very easy to come by around baseball lately. As Matt Smith gets up in the Philadelphia bullpen. I mean, the weather has certainly played a factor. Look at the bottom. The first 10 days of the season last year, there were only 12 days under 50 degrees, 12 games under 50 degrees. This year, 43. And you have to think that's part of the reason why run scoring is down. Sean Green pops one foul. When the weather's colder, the ball doesn't carry as much. Uh, usually the wind is blowing in during the season. That'll change, of course, over the course of the, of the summer, but uh, the weather's just been awful. Awful. With spring training as beautiful as it could be in Florida this year. Now let's see. When it snows a foot in Milwaukee, they're That's playing right. inside. Does that count as an under 50 degree day? Not today. Not today. Yeah, you know, the thing about Milwaukee is they don't have any heat in that building. Even though it's closed, as Green swings over the slide. That's right. They have the retractable roof, but they don't have any heat. So you still, I think the other day was what, maybe 50 degrees in there, so still a little chilly. Well, the Indians enjoyed that home away from home in Milwaukee beat the Angels today and for all the problems they've had playing games the Indians are four and two <laughs> well my proposal to Bud Selig is this have the kids have the first week in April off because the game starts so early now the Mets in fact start in April 1st have the first week off and have all day games that way you have a lot of people in the park the kids will come to the ballpark and although it wouldn't have worked in Cleveland it'll work it was beautiful today in the afternoon Either that or just uh, start a fund and put a roof on every state. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, at least the East Coast ballpark. Did you say that the Mets used to not play a night game until like May 1st? May 1st, yep. Every April game was a day game. And that probably lasts until about 1980. Green pulls one and a nice knockdown by Howard. He'll settle for the out at first. Howard. Crashing like a redwood <laughs> to snag that ground ball. Good job by Ryan. He almost dives over the ball. Made a good choice here because he would have had to throw that ball from his knees and just decided that instead of taking the chance of getting the runner at second, just shuffles it off the Conjure who's covering. So that's the second out as Green hits in some hard luck. Now Lou down at second with two away for Damien Easley. Who in his first start as a Met is 0 for 2 in a walk. And he made a productive out his last time up. Advancing Green, who had double to lead off. Scott Schoenweiss on call in the Mets bullpen. Pitcher due up next for the Mets. And the slider from Condry misses 1 0. So the Mets have tacked on a run here in the seventh and looking for more as Julio Franco comes out on deck. He'll bat for Joe Smith if easily can keep the inning going. One and one to easily. Well, what you see from Kondry is sliders and this split finger. Ground just foul. Now, if you're John Main and you're not pitching today, why are you sitting in the dugout? Giving support. It's very important for starting pitchers to be on the bench. Did you always stay on the bench when you weren't pitching? I 
When I was with the Mets, I'd say I was out there 80 percent of the time. When I went to Oakland, I was there 100 percent of the time. Sure, the weather was nice. Yes. <laughs> Right now is a good time to be in for a coffee. No, you want to be out there because you want to lend support. Uh, you know, the guys are playing hard out there. It's your day off. You want to make sure at least you're on the bench to, to lend support. Can you sometimes, though, learn a little more watching TV, not necessarily listening to us, but watching TV than you can from the dugout? It's easily fouls it off. That's a good question. It's interesting because with all the tape on pitchers and hitters and this and that, I always learn more from watching the game. From watching the dugout, you can see different reactions. You see the Beltron frustration. You can see different things that happen. You can see if a hitter's really late or swinging over the top of something. You really learn more when you're watching the game from the from the bench. The combination, and then go see it on tape. One and two to Easley. Lifts it in the air to right center, and Victorino gets over. And so the Mets done in the seventh, but not before they tack on a run. David Wright getting it started with a one out triple. And Moise Salou with his third hit of the night, bringing the run home. Let's carry a two run lead into the eighth. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Sterling Metz and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Metz. We go to the eighth inning. The Mets with a 5-3 to three lead in the rubber game of this three-game series. Joe Smith took the mound to start the eighth inning, but with the Phillies announcing a left-handed pinch hitter, Michael Bourne, the Mets will make a pitching change and bring in Scott Schoenweiss to pitch instead. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Switch to Verizon Fios TV, Internet, phone. It's the most advanced fiber optic network straight to your home. Toyota out of town scoreboard not baseball but hockey the Islanders trailing in Buffalo after two Rangers win in Atlanta Devils with a 4-3 lead on the Lightning in the third why are we showing hockey scores <laughs> trying to cover Howie Rose come on the Nationals are finally winning a game and we're showing hockey scores <laughs> There you go. That's got two runs off John Smoltz to break up that scoreless tie. Oh, that's great. He couldn't be with us here tonight, so the when was that? When was that picture from? It's, uh, 1925. <laughs> <laughs> Look, looks good. His hair is just perfect. Scott Schoenweiss on to pitch, and the Phillies will switch up, and instead of Bourne, they will send up Jason Worth, and he takes a strike from Schoenweiss. Well, Scott Schoenweiss has no earned runs so far in the games. He's had a little bit of wild to snow so far early on. Andy, Ch Andy Chavez in right field. And his Met debut. Schoenweiss, for Met fans who are watching for the first time, kind of sinker, slider, keeps the ball down. Not really a strikeout pitcher. Jason Wirth was with the Dodgers, but missed all of last year because he had wrist surgery in April. A few years ago, as though Worth was going to be a very valuable player. Ryan Madsen gets up in the Phillies bullpen. Worth hit 16 home runs in a part time role for the Dodgers in 04, but struggled and then got hurt last year. And now Schoenweiss falls behind him 3 and 1. By the way, Chavez and Schoenweiss are both in the game, but it's not a double switch because Chavez was brought in before the Mets paid the pitching change. So even though the pitcher Spot is due to lead off for the Mets in the bottom of the inning. Chavez is hitting in green spot, and Schoenweiss remains in the nine hole. There were two separate changes, and he walked him. And that's a huge walk because that brings the tying run to the plate with Jimmy Rollins, who already has two home runs tonight. And that's the last thing you want to do coming out of the bullpen is walk the lead off. Yeah, the same with Schoenweiss. Usually a good control pitcher, but he's been struggling so far. Rick Peterson wasting no time getting on the phone. You got that tough top of the batting order coming up for the Phils. Here's Rollins who homered in each of the first two innings batting right handed tonight and he takes a strike from Schoenweiss with the fastball. 
Five to three New York eighth inning and Aaron Howman gets up. I'm going to have that 41 pitch outing in Atlanta on Sunday. Popped up. And easily has it lined up. One away. So there's a big out for Schoenweiss. Yeah, Howman was not available here on Monday. And you have concern with Howman when he has those long yeah, outings yeah. because of the elbow tendonitis that he's trying to work through. I think once you get him over 25 or so pitches, he has trouble coming back from that, especially with the elbow. But what's been interesting, Ronnie, is that whereas last year, first Sanchez and then Heilman were generally brought in to begin the eighth inning, as Shane Victorino takes a strike, well, he's kind of changed the pattern this year. I think he's trying to find out who fits where. I mean, usually you would think that it's automatic that Heilman would start the eighth, but it's almost like he's holding back his weapons in case something happens and the Mets get in trouble. Double play ball to short, have to hurry against Victorino, but Reyes has plenty of time, and Delgado stays on the bag, and the Mets turn their third double play of the night. 6-6-3 six, six, as they double up the speedy Victorino, and Joe and Weiss works around trouble in the eighth. It's time to answer our Aflac trivia question. We asked you the three other pitchers, 44 and older, to start against the Mets. We told you one earlier, Charlie Huff, and there are the two others, Warren Spahn, who would eventually pitch for the Mets, and Phil Necro. I got Necro and Huff. I did not get Spahn. So you got the two knuckleballers, Necro and Huff, and the leading left-handed winner in history, Warren Spahn. Ryan Matson got off to a slow start this year, but he set career highs last year. And innings pitched, and strikeouts with 99, and wins, had 11 wins out of the bullpen last year. Bullpen and starting. Of course, they tried to make him a starter last year as David Newhan is pinch hitting for Schoenweiss as Billy Wagner gets ready in the bullpen. Newhan, a hit in four at bats in his first go round as a Met. Madsen was so successful as a rookie, as a relief pitcher, you really have to wonder about the decision to try and move him to the rotation. There's a strike two and one. Well, he's a tall, lanky guy. So, you know, a lot of times when you are a starting pitcher, sometimes you have to have be a little bigger or stockier to take the punishment. I like him out of the bullpen. Well, it turned out last year probably his best outing <laughs> was here at Shea Stadium when he pitched seven shutout innings out of the bullpen, only to have it come to an end in the 16th inning when Beltron hit a home run against him. And sent us home. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Newhand hits one on the ground to Utley. And there's one away. So one out and nobody on. And now here's Reyes, who was on base three times last night and has been on base three more times tonight. Look at that on base percentage. <laughs> Four, six, five. And if you do that, there's no way you can beat the Mets if Reyes is going to be on base that much. And there's been a, a lot of instances where he hasn't scored right. in, a, in a case where he would have scored last year. So Tonight he's scored one and driven in two, and he hits this one at deep left center field, rolling back, and he has enough room to pull it in for the second out. So two out and nobody on. Time for a baseball night in New York update with Matt Yellow. All right, Gary, Braves and Nationals, 1-0 Nationals in the eighth, and Ronnie Belliard adds to that by blooping one in. It's 2-0 Nats in the eighth. Uh, the pitchers have combined to allow one Braves hit so far. Gary. All right, thanks, Matt. And uh, the Nationals, of course, will be here tomorrow night to open a weekend series, and they'll have their ace, John Patterson, on the mound against Mike Pelfrey, who makes his season debut. Here's Loduca with two out and nobody on. Ball is one for three, and he drives one to center. Shallow, Rowan in, and he makes the diving catch. And that ends the inning. So Rowan, who likes to play shallow, came in to catch it shallow. Billy Wagner tries to save it against the heart of the Phillies' order in the ninth.
This year, when you can't be home to watch your Mets on SNY or CW11, check out MLB.tv. You can log on to the Internet to watch every out-of-market Mets game of the season live. Catch those you missed on demand or listen to every radio broadcast live. Sign up today for MLB.tv, an unparalleled live baseball experience. For more details, visit Mets.com, where baseball is always on. Billy Wagner on to pitch the ninth as we check out the line score. Wagner trying to save it for Tom Glavin. It would be win number 292 for Glavin. And if saved here for Wagner will give him 326, which ties him for 10th place with an old Met, Roberto Hernandez. Not an easy road to hoe here with Utley, Howard, and Burl do up in the ninth. Billy going up against his old mates. And Utley drives the first one to left. Al Lou back, one away. One pitch, one hard out off the bat of Chase Utley. And that means Ryan Howard could not come to bat as the tying run. Well, one of the reasons the Mets are in the position they are is Glavin handled Utley, handled Howard, 0 for 5, those two hitters in the meat of the order. The sum total of the Phillies' offense tonight has been Jimmy Rollins. He had two home runs in the first two innings to drive in all three Philadelphia runs. Phillies have had only five hits. Howard was walked and struck out twice. Joe Smith gave the Mets a scoreless seventh, and Scott Schoenweiss a scoreless eighth, and now Wagner trying to finish it off. And Howard takes a strike. You know, if the Mets were able to close this out and win this series, one thing you have to say, Jimmy Rollins did some talking, but he backed it up this series. He did last night and tonight, as troubles the first game of the series. Wagner not quite on the rubber. <laughs> they let you get away with that. I remember Fernando Valenzuela occasion when he would go with that. When he would throw to the mound sometimes he would step a, a foot in front of it get a little extra on his fastball. Much throw. easier to throw from 59 feet isn't it. Yes. <laughs> Wagner blows one by Howard and it's one and two. Well he's not been very heavily used in the early season. Boy, that fastball was smoking out of the hand of Billy Wagner, 94 miles an hour. That's the good guess. In the air to left center field toward the gap. Al Lou closing ground, but he can't get to it. And Howard on his way to second. He's in with a one-out double. And Pat Burrow will come to plate the plate as the tying run. Well, just tried to throw a fastball by Howard. That ball caught too much in the middle of the plate. So you're trying to hit that outside corner. Never got there. That ball is up too. It's a good piece of hitting though. So the first two hitters, Utley and Howard, both hitting it hard against Wagner. Well, as a home run hitters do, he has a little bit of an uppercut. But a quick bat by Howard. So here's Burl, who's 0 for 2 in a walk tonight. Tying run at the plate, and he hits it in the air to left field. Playable for Alou. Beltron comes over to watch as Alou makes the catch for the second out. So the Phillies who have been taking a lot of pitches are swinging early in the count against Wagner who is now one out away from the save. And that's what you got to do against Wagner. He throws too hard to be able to take pitches or take strikes. So here's Wes Helms the final hope for the Phillies. Helms two for three tonight. Single twice. Once against Glavin, once against Joe Smith. Let's try to move the Phillies six games behind after a week and a half. Uh, the slider misses 1 0. That's will be in Philadelphia for a couple of games Monday and Tuesday. One and zero to Helms. Gets away from Laduca, and that'll move Howard over to third. So the wild pitch advances Howard. That run means nothing. Only a run at the plate matters. Well, two sliders in a row from Wagner. This one down. Almost looked like it hit the foot of Wes Helms. The right got hit earlier in the game, but no, just eludes him and eludes Laduca. More importantly now, Wagner behind on Helms 2-0. Jimmy Rollins hoping his teammates can contribute. He 
inside ball three. So now Wagner in danger of putting the tying run on base. Aaron Rowan the on deck batter. Wagner closed out the game on Monday in a non save situation. It's his first appearance since. On 3 0, oh, he throws a strike to Helm. Howard at third and two down, and Aaron Howman getting up just in case. Haven't seen this very often since Wagner joined the Mets. A little backup. 5-3 New York, ninth inning. On the ground to third, right in front of him. Throws it high, and Delgado finds the bag, and the ball game is over. Billy Wagner with a shaky save, and Tom Glavin is now eight wins away from 300 victories in his career. I think more importantly, the Mets make a, sm a small statement, win a series here at Shea against Philadelphia, which is they're going to have some exciting games over the course of the summer. 282 for Glavin, who didn't have his best stuff, but that's one of the reasons why he's on his quest for 300, because he can win when he doesn't have his best stuff. Wagner moves to number 10 all time and saves with number 326. Jose Reyes with the big hit to put the Mets in front. And the Mets take the rubber game from the Phils. Coming up tonight on Geico Sports Night, we'll go in the Mets clubhouse for reaction. All three local hockey teams in action in the playoffs and reaction to the Imus firing. Mets win it 5-3. to three. Back with more from Shea in a moment. Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Nissan and your local Nissan dealers. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Corona, kick back and relax with an ice cold Corona. Relax responsibly. And by IO Digital Cable, the leaders in HD and presenting sponsor of the Mets in high definition. Do you see an HD? Time now for our Panasonic Plasma Replay. Panasonic for the speed of sports. Fifth inning, Shane Victorino at the plate. And Tom Glavitt gets it to pop off, and David Wright gives it the extra effort going into the photo box. Ben didn't get the ball, but he liked the play. <laughs> and the Mets win at 5-3 to three as Tom Glavitt posts career victory number 292. And what more do you need to say about how much it means for a pitcher to win on days when he doesn't have it all together? And not only that, he's the ace of the staff. And to come out after two indifferent outings from Maine and Perez yesterday, I think Glavin was uh, outstanding tonight. 292 for him, 326 for Wagner, which ties him for 10th place. And I think Reyes had his stamp on this game. Two for three, two runs driven in, scored a run, intentional walk. And Moise Salou with three hits. He had a big day as well as he continues to rake. And the Mets beat the Phillies 5-3 to, to take two out of three in the series and go to 6-3 and three on the year. Be sure to join us tomorrow night as the Mets open a three-game weekend series against Manny Acta and the Washington Nationals. Coming up next, it's Nissan post-game live with Matt Yaloff and Lee Mazzilli. It was a chilly night at Shea as Tom Glavin took the mound, and it was hard for him early. He walked three in the first inning, gave up a home run to Jimmy Rollins, and then another home run to Jimmy Rollins in the second. And the Phillies went up 3-1, to one, but the Mets battled back. Jose Reyes had the big hit, driving home the tying and go-ahead runs. And Glavin at the bullpen did the rest. David Wright had a triple and scored a run to get an insurance run home as the Mets win it 5-3. Now for Ron Darling and Kevin Burkhart, I'm Gary Cohen saying so long from Shea Stadium. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. The Mets come up aces. Tom Glavin, not his best night, but certainly enough for the Mets to win. Some timely hitting and good relief work. Lee Mazzilli, yes, this is Nissan Post Game Live. Two out of three. Uh, what do you think of that? I think it's good. Anytime you go against a club, you want to win a series. You keep saying, win a series, win a series. That's what they did. Yeah, that's what they did. Now the Nationals come rolling in, and uh, you know, based on their record, that should be a good time for yeah. the Mets. And we bring in Ron Darling now, standing by at Shea Stadium, flying solo here on Nissan Post Game Live. <laughs> 
Hey, Ronnie, let's talk about the pen here. I know hitting was uh, was a big part of this game, but the Mets wins before tonight were lopsided wins. This was a close win. That's a big night for the back end of the pen. Well, I think they did an amazing job. I think that Smith has been remarkable early here in the season. The rookies just seems unflappable. Sean Weiss, I think, got his feet wet today. You know, put the first runner on with a walk. Don't want to do that, but induced a double play. And Wagner with his 326 save. He's been doing this for a long, long time. He's been excellent for a long time. Hey, Ronnie, what did Glavin do that Perez didn't do tonight? It seemed like, you know, after the first inning or two, he kind of settled down. Well, I think what happens with a veteran pitcher like Tommy, I think that he went into the game and, you know, he has those memories of pitching in Atlanta his last start and just that cold weather, it's hard really for him to grip the ball. So I think after the Rollins' second home run, I think he was um, really tired of pitching behind in the count because the Philadelphia right. Phillies have a lineup that seems to take a lot of pitches, want to work the starter to get his pitch count up, and they did that against Glavin. I think after that Rollins' home run, you saw his reaction. He was pretty yeah. angry, yeah. and he just said to himself, you know, that's enough to enough. I'm going to pitch on top, take my chances, and I think his work, especially with Utley and Howard in the middle of the lineup, uh, was great. 0 for 5, those two hitters were against him, and I think that's why he was able to leave with a lead. Yeah, and you know what? You said it was against Ryan Howard. I think he had a game plan against Howard. He threw a lot of balls in, in, and then away. It just didn't seem like Howard had any good swings off him tonight. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think that Glavin, he knows who can beat him in the lineup. He's that intelligent. He knows what guys he's got to keep off base. And I think, you know, Rollins now, uh, you know, hits him pretty well. He had a two-homer game against him last year. But uh, after that second home run, I think he just really, uh, you know, bared down a little bit. He did some things that, you know, maybe Oliver Perez, when he watches it, he's going to love to see that because that's those are the kind of things that veteran pitchers do. Right. And there's a reason that he's mm -hmm. threatening uh, to get 300 wins this season because, uh, you know, you got to win when you don't have your best stuff. And uh, Glavin did a great job tonight. You also have to have good defense behind you, Ron. And again, the Mets turned three double plays. Uh, that, that's got to be huge as a pitcher on the mound when you know that this is behind you. Uh, does that let you do your job a little bit easier? Well, for the Mets, you know, they've been a double play machine so far this early part of the season. And yes, it should. That's why the walks the last, the first two nights, six by Maine and seven by Perez yesterday, it's very alarming because when you have a defense like you have with the Mets, they will turn the ball, uh, turn double plays if you let them hit the ball and put it in play. And I think, uh, you know, it was a nice job and, and, and nice job by Easley tonight. Damien Easley getting the start. He turned a couple of double plays himself. Ron, it's going to be interesting tomorrow night when Mike Pelfrey gets his first start of the season. The big league level uh, hasn't been with the team going from Florida to this miserable weather up here uh, thoughts or predictions on what we may see well I think you're going to see a, a good pitch ball game I think Pelfrey although he struggled a little bit uh, towards the end of spring training and his starts in, uh, in single A the one thing that he has an advantage over a guy like Tommy Glavin who's a field pitcher is Pelfrey can come out and start smoking throw 95 90, 95 96 miles an hour using that great sinker that he has and uh, I, th I think that he might be able to eat up some of those national bats but I think that's the key for Pelfrey is that in the cold weather he'll still be able to throw that good fastball most people assume and I guess it's a fair assumption when Pelfrey arrives Millage will be on his way to New Orleans or at least joining uh, the New Orleans team wherever they are one at bat tonight clearly over anxious with a man standing on third base well Jimmy Moore is a master of that he knows it's a young player coming up in an RBI situation to get a big insurance run across and of course he threw him a changeup and had him out front but lasting millage is going to be a great player in the big leagues it's just that right now if he goes down he he's going down because they want him to play they want him to get some at bats and be ready when this uh, time comes again because it will come all right, Ronnie. Ron Darling at Shea Stadium. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Ronnie. All right. Uh, and, Maz, let's keep going here on Millage for a second. Uh, that's a tough spot. It, yeah. it has a nice spring, makes the team. Nice mm -hmm. story, right? Comes up, barely plays because things worked early. Sean Green's been hitting. Right. The team wins the first four out of the box. Uh, he's better off down. Oh, there's he? no question. He needs to go down and play, like Ronnie said. He needs to get at bats. If you're counting on him later on in the season, he needs to play. I mean, he's a young kid. I mean, he's one of the top prospects, so he has to go down. He has to get at bats and play well. That's All right, we'll see how uh, we'll see if that move is made. We're mm -hmm. assuming that move will be made. We'll know more uh, tomorrow as Mike Pelfrey makes his first start of the season for the uh, the big league team. Nissan Post Game Live takes a break. We remind you it is presented in high definition by IO Digital Cable, the leader in HD. Do you see in HD? When Maz and I return, we go inside the game. Highlights from Game Three of a three-game set against the Phil. We'll be right back.
All right, welcome back to Nissan Post Game Live. We take a look at the Mets box score tonight. Lots going on in the middle there. Moises Alou, three for four, double RBI, two runs scored. You know, they got him in large part to hit left-handed pitching because they lacked that last season. This guy is a pro's pro. He's been doing it for a decade and a half. Oh, there's no question. And the reason why you got him, like you said, is to hit left-handed pitching. But, you know, he's just a quality professional hitter. He knows what to look for, when to look for it, how to look for it. He's an RBI guy that's driven him 100 runs before. You know, he knows what he's doing. You know, you got him for experience to help the young hitters as well. I mean, it's been a great pickup for the Mets so far. 343 on the young season for Moise Salou. And he spoke with Kevin Burkhart after the game. Well, Moises, you've done it again. Spring training, you know, you didn't hit too much. And here we go in April, and you are tearing the cover off the baseball. Well, you know, I never had a good spring training, like I told you over there in Port St. Lucie. Uh, even though I was a little bit worried because I'm on a new team and you, I wanted to look good. But I wasn't worried when the season started, I was going to be ready to play. And, uh, you know, uh, so far we only have like about eight or nine games, but I, I feel really good at the play. And, I'm hoping to continue to feel that way. You know, we've talked a lot during the broadcast today about how the cold affects a pitcher. How does it affect the hitter? Uh, it does. You know, I, I remember my first at bat yesterday. I didn't feel like swinging the bat. But today, for some reason, I think today's colder, but I feel a little warmer today. And uh, uh, I guess that's why I saw the, the bat better. Does it amaze you that Jose Reyes is now becoming such an RBI threat? Fourth inning, you double to start off the frame, and there's Reyes delivering again. I think he's with the 11 RBIs now. I mean, I, I, know, I knew Reyes was a great player, but... Tell you the truth, you know, playing with the guy every day, you know, it, it surprised me a little bit how, how, how good of a hitter, how good a clutch hitter he is, and how good of an all-around player he is. And, you know, I'm very happy that I got, I got a chance to play with him. You faced Tom Glavin plenty of times in your career. Did you see from him today just the ability to fight through it? You know, it, it just seemed like after the Rollins home run, he just said enough and, and really did a nice job. Yeah, Tommy is a guy that always was tough on, on us, you know. Uh, was a guy that if you didn't get him early, you know, he, he bears down and really get, get his pitches, you know. Today was a little tough on him because uh, uh, the, the weather, you know, he didn't have a very good grip on the ball, but still he did a great job and he managed to win the game. I kept, I mean, he kept us in the game and for order for us to, to win it for him. Moises, thanks for the time. Go get warm, okay? Thank you. All right, Kevin Burkhart, Moise Salou. Now Maz and I go inside the game, the rubber game. The lefty, Jamie Moyer, facing fellow lefty, Tom Glavin. Moyer is a young 44. I take the liberty of saying that. I don't really know that to be fact. Glavin, 41, both guys with over 200 wins. Glavin closing in on 300 wins, a combined age of 85. The oldest ever matchup between lefties. That's probably TMI. Too much information for you. How about this? How about Jimmy Rollins? Starts off the game getting large. He kills Glavin in his career. His fourth of the year. one nothing fills just like that. Next batter, Shane Victorino walks. And then with one out, Ryan Howard. Swinging. Shane Victorino meet at second base. Great play there by Jose Reyes getting the glove down. The third would-be base dealer to be cut down this season by LaDuca. Pat Burrell goes down swinging. Rather, Wes Helms goes down swinging, and Glavin's out of trouble. Bottom first, Jose Reyes. That's a shock, right? Starts off the game with a hit. He's on base again. We talked about this in the pregame. They got a score. Paul LaDuca, the single to left. So the Mets in business early. Carlos Beltran steps up. Carlos Beltran picks up where LaDuca leaves off. That's a single, that's a run, and just like that, we're tied up at 1-1. Beltron with nine RBI so far this year. But here comes Moyer, uh, always the pro, gets Carlos Delgado. Tough night for Delgado, 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. And then David Wright with a chance to do more damage for the Mets, but the double play factors in here. It's a 5-4-3, and the game remains 1-1. Top of the second, Aaron Rowan leads off. Aaron Rowan. Base hit to left field, finds a hole. Next batter, Tom Glavin. We talked to Ron Darling about defense. We showed you the double plays. How about this? David Wright in foul territory. Carlos Ruiz running, and he gets a mess. Well, it's a great play, and if you look at his plant, where he plants his foot, it slips on him a little bit, and he gets a chance to skip it right over there. It was just a great play. We talked about that in the pregame. Yeah, right. Uh, his defense has been looking very good early on this season. A couple outs later, you got to be kidding, right? Rollins <laughs> again. This time, a two-run shot. Sneaks over the Mega Million sign. His fifth of the year. He has six lifetime against Glavin, and Glavin clearly not happy, and he bears down. We'll get back to that. 
Moise Salou in the second leads things off with a little base hit up the middle, hitting 343. Next batter, Sean Green, plunk, two runners on base, and Glavin. Talk about a, 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 just a great hitter for a pitcher, and that includes dropping down sacrifice bunts. This is a major problem. Wes Helms throws it away, and a run scores. Yeah, that, that's a bad play by Helms. Helms has to be in here really charging on. You can see Glavin squaring around the bunt. He broke late on the play, did not get a good angle on it, and winds up throwing the ball away, and it cost them the Phillies a run. So now the Mets with two on and two outs, and uh, Moyer facing LaDuca with two runners in scoring position. And Moyer comes back, and this is a big out at that point of the game because it preserves the Phillies' lead. Bottom four, Alou leading things off, and again, he gets it done. No batting gloves, by the way, Matt. How about that? He's a man. Yeah, well, he also, <laughs> He's a man. he also finds the gap, the left center field gap, three for four on the night for Moise Salou. Damian Easley making his first start of the season, playing second base. Easley... Uh, easily walks uh, ball in the dirt on a 3-2 so uh, the Mets are in business one more time first and second Glavin again lays one down this time Wes Helms doesn't get back to third yeah, he that, slips they, they, there's definitely a communication problem right there Wes Helms slipped a tad they could only get the guy at first and that proves big Jose Reyes comes through one more time a loose scores easily comes around and and beats the throw so it's a 4-3 Mets lead they're on top Top five, one more time for David Wright. Check this out. Over at the stands, finds the wall first, and then leans Absolutely. over. Absolutely, gets to the rail, looks for the ball. Just look, he's feeling for the rail right now. You can see it, and he, just, he knows where he's at. Kind of uses it as leverage there against the hips. Uh, Wright gets it done. Bottom six, Sean Green starts the inning with a double into the corner. Sean Green's second double of the season, and what a great story Sean Green has been after a terrible spring training in terms of batting average. After easily grounds out, lasting's millage. Possibly his final at bat before he gets sent down because Mike Pelfrey's getting called up. First pitch with a guy on third pops up. So Millage goes back to the dugout. Green still on third. And how about this? They intentionally walk Reyes with first and second open with two outs. You know what? It doesn't surprise me. It does not surprise me. The way he's swinging a bat, it's a good move. You don't want him to. You don't want him at the plate anymore. Uh, all right. So it's Laduca, and he gets plunked. So the Mets have the bases loaded. This is not what Moyer intended. Carlos Beltran, 79 miles an hour, strikes out. And not happy. And clearly not. Frustrated. Top seven with Joe Smith in. Glavin's night is over. There the defense comes through again. This time it's a 4-6-3 double play. Bottom seven. One out. David Wright. You know, he's got that hit streak going, right? 20 games coming into tonight. This one down the line against Clay Condry. And Wright is pulling Jose Reyes. Check him out, Maz. He's not stopping. He's not stopping. There you go. He's kind of dying, but he's not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> First triple of the season. Then Moises Salou comes up, and bam, just like that. Quick to the ball. Third RBI of the season for Moises Salou. It's 5-3 Mets. That brings in Billy Wagner. Billy Wagner for the save in the ninth inning with one out. Ryan Howard, very, very quiet. Very, very quiet up until this point, but with nobody on, he doesn't represent anything, but now he does. Now he represents the possible fourth run, his first hit of the game. Wagner comes back with two outs with Howard on third. Wes Helms the batter. Final out, perhaps. Oh, by the way, the final out, perhaps. Wes Helms, ground ball. David Wright fields it cleanly over to first. Delgado comes down with it. The Mets win it by a score of 5-3. to three. And let's just point out a couple of notes, interesting notes, or at least items of note. Ryan Howard's nine-game streak against uh, the Mets of scoring a run comes to an end as he is, does not score a run. Uh, yeah, and I think why the Mets won two out of three as well is because he really kept Ryan Howard at bay. And Tom Glavin, and Tom Glavin, 292. 292. 292, eight wins away from that magical number. Uh, you know, if you've watched, it's kind of interesting because we've seen this guy's entire career. This isn't a guy that most fans, uh, you know, you've seen this guy. Right. It's not like you came in late in the game and the guy had already won 
250 games. Right. You're seeing the back end. Many Mets fans remember the whole thing. The whole package. It's an amazing right body yeah. of work. You know, and you love watching him because you know what he does? He pitches. He just doesn't throw. He pitches. And you see guys, you know, you can see 100 guys on the streets of New York throw 100 miles per hour, you know, but you watch him pitch. It, it just, the way he does it, it, it shows you that this is the right way to go and there's a wrong way to go by throwing 95 miles an hour like yesterday and looking at Perez he was all over the place and here's a guy that's throwing 80 miles an hour and he's just putting everyone down all right it is finally official uh, the Mets did make the move Mike Pelfrey up lastings millage down so that has been confirmed mm -hmm. and it's not a surprise no, to I don't anybody. Think it's a surprise no not but at all millage will get some at bats and you know throughout the course of the whole season they're gonna need millage again oh sure Sure. And you know what? They're counting on him. Maybe next year it'll be their full-time right fielder. That's yeah, very possible. All right, we take a break here on Nissan Post Game Live. When we come back, Willie Randolph. His team takes two out of three. His team waits for the Nationals. They roll in tomorrow night. We'll be right back. All right, thanks a lot, Lou. Willie Randolph now. His team pulls within one game of the first place Atlanta Braves with a win tonight against Philadelphia. Here's Willie Randolph speaking to the media at Shea just a few minutes ago. No big surprise. As most of you guys know, we made a player move, and um, we're going to bring up Mike Puffy tomorrow to start for us. And last thing's going to be uh, sent down to AAA. Okay. Well, uh, Tom had a tough first couple innings. What do you what do you think changed after that? Because he was he and the rest of your staff was pretty dominant the rest of the game. Well, it's sometimes just a matter of just getting in the rhythm, Mark. That's all. You know. I mean, um, uh, I don't. You know, everyone has to deal with the elements in the cold weather, so you know I don't really make excuses for that or bring that up this time of year because everyone's dealing with that. And sometimes you you pitch well, sometimes you don't. I just think that Tommy, you know, again had to get into a rhythm, and once he got into rhythm, as you notice, he threw the ball well. So you attribute that to just getting comfortable, getting to the feel of, of you know uh, the game, and, and usually when good pitchers do that, they they uh, shut guys down for three or four innings. That's pretty much what he did. It's a great ball game, kept us in the game, and. Uh, you know, just got himself right and, and, and you know, limit, you know, uh, kept the uh, damage down to a minimum. Willie, is Reyes already to the point where he's going to start getting intentionally walked in, in those situations, do you think? Well, some clubs might do that. I would. I mean, he's, uh, you know, becoming real dependable in, in the RBI spots. He's just aggressive, so you just never know what you're going to, you know, get. I mean, you got to respect that he can, um, you know, he's going to compete. That's the thing I love about Jose is that, you know, when, when the game's on the line, and I think most managers see that he's going to compete real hard, and uh, and when guys do that, good things happen. So I will respect them. You know that that's 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 nice to see him get that respect this early. But you know it happens every once in a while. We, you know we have Laduca behind him, who's a, who's a solid hitter also. But Jose's been swinging the bat pretty well. Well, you look like in the top of the eighth there. Uh, you were going to keep uh, Smith in the game. Before they uh, sent sent born, uh, born up to pinch hit, was it was it something where you liked Smith as opposed to Heilman? I mean, it seems like typically you go to Heilman in, in the eighth inning there. What what was the uh, what'd you like about Joe? No, I actually was just forcing their hand. That's all. Pitch pitch front pitching because I want you know I figured to bring a lefty in there, bring my lefty in there, and they got two switch hitters, two lefties after that. So again, early in the season, I'm trying to just feel things out a little bit. Don't don't again don't assume that. Aaron's going to be eighth inning all the time. Uh, Sean Weiss uh, is capable of doing that. So. Yeah, guys, Tom will be in in a minute. Okay. Well, there was something on the wires that now there's, a, there's 150 players who are going to wear number 42 on Sunday, and there's a couple of people who thought that maybe that's almost too much of a good thing that it's cheapening it any. And I, I know how much it means. I haven't you heard anything it. about that. That's not my concern. I'm going to be proud to put it on. That's all I'm concerned about. You don't. It doesn't bother you that <clears throat> many players are wearing it. No, it doesn't bother me at all. What are, you, what are your expectations of Belfry tomorrow night after seeing him? Tomorrow? I expect him to come out and pitch well. That's all. I don't know. I don't mean, crystal balls, anything like that. Uh, hopefully, he'll pitch real well. You know, back to hit, give us a quality start. All right, how about Willie Randolph not using Heilman in the eighth inning, which is a situation we would typically see Heilman in? Well, you know, Willie just said, and it's kind of interesting to know that don't assume that Heilman's going to pitch the eighth inning all year long. So it just kind of opens it up and saying you have Sean Weiss, maybe Smith as well. So it gives Willie some options. Well, we don't know maybe about the eighth inning guy. Tonight it was uh, Smith, but mm -hmm. um, we do know about Tom Glavin. He's usually good for six solid yeah. every time out, and tonight we saw it again. Here's Tom Glavin speaking to the press just a short while ago. Uh, 
Tom, it seemed like after the home run to Rollins, you just kind of had had enough and you started to settle in there. What, what changed? Um, that probably was part of it. Um, I guess I got aggravated with myself enough about what I was doing up to that point. But, um, you know, I had I, the first two innings, I kind of had a little, I guess for lack of a better way to explain it, a little mechanical issue. Um, you know, I felt like when I get out there to start the game, everything for some reason, I was in a hurry. You know, and, and I was rushing in my delivery and rushing to try to make pitches. And after the second inning, um, you know, when I threw my warm up pitches in the third inning, I kind of tried to make a little conscious adjustment and it felt good and uh, felt like my pitches were a little bit better during the warm up and I just tried to go with it and, and uh, seemed to work. Tom, on a night like this where it's kind of a raw night, is it, is it tougher for you than for other pitchers to kind of get in the feel of the game? Uh, I'm, you know, I think in general, yeah, it's a little bit tougher for guys that are control pitchers, field pitchers uh, in this kind of weather than it is for guys that can just rear back and let it go. But, um, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's something we all have to deal with this part of the year. And, and you know, honestly, tonight wasn't too bad. Um, you know, it was cold. Um, you know, but like I was talking the last couple of days, if you if you have the cold without the wind, then I think it's a little bit easier to deal with. And tonight, um, you know, at least on the mound, it wasn't overly breezy, so uh, you're at least able to keep a little perspiration on your hand. And, and uh, you know, my, my feel wasn't bad. It was just early on, I I was having a hard time getting the right tempo and, and, and feeling like I could repeat my pitches. How much the value in your mind of, of taking two or three from Philly? Well, I mean, they're on our division. You know, every every series against teams in our division are important. Uh, and I think, you know, it's it's always important and probably more so this year because I think uh, we all realize that we're going to have a very competitive division and uh, the better any of us play within our own division, then I think uh, that's going to go a long way towards whoever whoever wins this thing. So, um, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to sit here and say it sends any messages or anything like that. It's way too early for that, obviously. But, um, you know, I just think that uh, with the way our, our division shapes up, uh, you know, those head to head 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 to head matchups are important, and, and you know, you want to win two out of three in every series. But I think it's even more important when you're doing it within your own division. Tom, uh, two important sacrifices tonight helped get the offense going. How much pride do you take in that part of your game, being able to get that down and move the runners along? Well, I mean, I take a ton of pride in that. And I always have, and, and it's an important part of uh, what we do as pitchers. You know, I mean, uh, you can help yourself win a game sometimes, uh, aside from going out there and making pitches you know there are other things that you need to do and and you know certainly the two bunts tonight were uh you know were important bunts and and um you know but uh, especially for me on a game like tonight where i wasn't pitching well early uh if i can do other things to kind of help us climb back into it then then those things become even more important now how'd you approach utley and howard you did a you know, big great job against those guys tonight and how struck out howard a couple times um, you know, I mean, the same way I try to approach everybody, really. I mean, keep you know, move the ball in and out, change speeds a lot, and and try not to uh, try not to repeat too much of, of the same thing. And and you know, I guess that that happens sometimes. You know, when you have two guys like that in the middle of a lineup, and you know those are the guys you don't want to let beat you. Um, you know, those are the guys that kind of see your A game, so to speak. You know, and and you know, I'm not saying I wasn't trying against the other guys, but. Uh, it's when those guys get in there, you have a little bit different sense of the importance of the at bat and not trying to let them beat you. And you know, more than anything, I located better against those guys than than I did against Jimmy tonight. And, and uh, you know, made a couple of mistakes to Jimmy, and he, and he made me pay for it. How does the matchup of two pitchers, left-handers in their 40s, is it more than a coincidence that maybe you guys have a similar style and maybe not overpowering and allows you to pitch that long? Probably not. No. no. Um, you know, and I think there's. Uh, there's something to be said for our styles of pitching and, and, and our mechanics and stuff like that that have enabled us to pitch as long as we have. You know, um, I don't think either one of us would tell you that we have some secret formula that's allowed us to stay healthy and keep pitching. I think a lot of it has to do with with our style. You know, and we're not obviously power pitchers. We don't have uh, overly complicated mechanics, and I think because of that, um, I think it's kind of put us in a position where we haven't pounded our arms or pounded our bodies over the years and and you know it's enabled us to to keep on going and and you know I think the hardest thing for power guys is 
you know, number one, staying healthy, but number two, when that power starts to go, then you have to adapt your game a little bit, and I think that's hard for a lot of power guys. Jamie and I haven't had to main or, or, or change our game a whole lot in terms of how we do it. We're, we're location guys, we're change of speed guys, and um, it's always been that way. And, and as you guys made, made history tonight, too, because the oldest left-handers to start against each other. All right, well, you know, I mean, uh, glad to be a part of it, I guess. <laughs> Got eight more in your time? Uh, I hope so. I better. I hope eight more and beyond. I hope. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. All right. Thanks, Tom. All right. You're welcome. Interesting, Naz. He talked about how he had to kind of slow things down. He didn't feel like his rhythm was right. He was moving too fast early on. Well, you know, as a veteran pitcher, you can you see that. You know that I have to make an adjustment, and that's what he did. You have to recognize it. And you know what? As a veteran pitcher, you recognize that, you know what? I got to do something different because something's not right. You know, for a younger and inexperienced pitcher, you know what? You may not be able to do that very it, quickly. It, does he even need a coach at this stage of his career? Well, yeah. You always need a coach because you always need someone to pat you on the back and say you're doing okay. Right. You like, know, I, like, uh, like I do yeah, to you. Yeah, exactly. You do to me. Yeah, I got you. All right. How about the bunting? He takes pride in the bunting. It's something that he knows is a big part of the game and well, he's fantastic at it. He's great at it and, and he answered that question because you, you win ball games by practicing bunting and, and I'll tell you what you know it could be five six games during his career where he won a ball game because of his bunting and tonight is you know a perfect example of what he did tonight so you know that's something that the young players out there need to know need to work on it's something that's part of the game you know it's a fundamental part of the game and we, we overlook it it's been going on for a hundred years you got to do it. Yeah and it's always curious to me not that it's an easy thing to do by any means mm -hmm. But you, you wonder why more guys are not good at it. Yeah, and it's not easy when when a guy's throwing 95 miles per hour at you. But you know what? You got to work at it. You got to practice. You know, if guys just take it for granted. You know, you take BP, you watch batting practice. They'll come in and take two quick bunts and then want to hit. Yeah, and they forget about money. All right. Well, some guy who's uh, make everything look easy. One of those guys is Jose mm -hmm. Reyes. You're going to hear from Jose Reyes when Nissan Post Game Live returns. All right, we're back here on Nissan Post Game Live. Don't forget, Geico Sports Night follows this show. The Mets beat the Phillies five to three. They're six and three on the season. The difference between six and three and two and seven, pretty simple here. The Mets have allowed 24 runs this year in nine games. The Phillies have allowed 50 runs in nine games. That's a big difference, and that's the reason why one team is one game out and the other team is two and seven and already five games under 500. Jose Reyes now, two for four, a couple RBIs and a run in this game after the game. Me a tough, but well, as soon we get in the baddest ball, you know, we don't worry about if he's caught. No, we just try to put the ball in play, you know, so try to swing it. So. As you keep coming up with hits with first base open, do you think there'll be a point where teams might start putting you on there instead of pitching to you? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's the deal, you know, but every time they walk me, I'm going to take the walk, you know, so I try to get in base, like I said before, no matter how. Well, taking two out of three from them, they're obviously coming into the season there and one of your chief rivals coming in, but how about taking two out of three from them? That's good. We win the series, you know, that's the most important thing. You have to win the series, you know, they got a good team and we play good, you know, so we lost yesterday, but we come back today and win the game. So big game for us. How about the, uh, the defense with you guys? seems like you guys are a double play machine at this point. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're working really hard in spring training, you know, to try to pull everybody together, you know, and right now we, we're doing the season, you know, that's the most important thing. We are staying together like a team. You know, that's why we've been successful so far with the defense. And, and coming back, you just can't count you guys out. Game after game, it, it, the way the season ended last year, it seems to have picked up again. You know, we're going to play hard every day. You know, every day we try to give it 100% doing the field, you know. Specifically when we play here, you know, we, we have a lot of exciting fun here. You know, we have a lot of energy, so we try to do the best we can. You know, last year we we getting closer, but it wasn't enough for us because San Luis, they, they play better enough, and this year we try to do it. How about the weather out there? Was this the coldest? Yeah, it was cold. It was cold today, you know. But the most important thing, we got a W, you know. So that's the most important thing for us. Huh. All right, that's Jose Reyes, and this is the Nissan play of the game. It's Shane Victorino with the pop-up, and it's David Wright to the stands and makes it look easy. And by no means is that easy. But uh, you know what? Home Park knows that area pretty well. Security guard out of the way. No one in the front row, which also helps. Right? <laughs> so that's our play of the game. And uh, tomorrow's pitching matchup 
Mike Pelfrey, his 2007 debut, Maz, against John Patterson, who's already 0-2 with a very high ERA. What do you look for for Pelfrey? Hasn't been with the team. Uh, weather conditions could play in. Could be. You know, you're probably, the kid is going to probably be nervous tomorrow. But you know what? I think Willie's doing the right thing. He set up the rotation to face the Nationals rather than coming up and facing the Phillies or the Braves. So, I mean, I think the kids are going to be in a good spot, pitch five or six innings, and Willie would be happy. Another note before we leave here, Juan Padilla, the reliever who uh, made great strides in 05 then missed all of last year with Tommy John. Bad news, he's going to have surgery uh, tomorrow to repair a partial tear in his flexor tendon so he could miss the rest oh, of this oh, yeah. season as well. Mm -hmm. So that is bad news. Duana Sanchez is a question. Padilla is a question. And so the other uh, guys have to step up? Yeah, no doubt. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for Nissan Post Game Live. Geico Sports Night is next. I'm Matt Yalla. I'm Aline Mazzilli. Good night, New York.